and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, angels and demons and monsters and serpents. This is Brothers of the Serpent Podcast coming to you not live once again in the 10 by 10 by 10 tangent cube of science, where we are nestled amongst the dusty bones of an ancient seabed high atop the Everest Plateau back in Texas after six weeks in Egypt and then two weeks sick. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a... Uh, a pretty bad lingering cough from I I don't know it would have started in the first time we went to. Uh, We've been back for two weeks already. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Mm. It's uh, like I picked up the cough. It started in which it usually does. The other times we've gone there, I start coughing in uh, in Luxor, mm. and then it lasts up into Aswan, and then we went to the Fayum and it got worse, and then we went back to Cairo and it started to get better, and then we went back to Luxor and it came back. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and then it got worse and worse, and then we f- we flew back here, and then I picked up all the pollen and everything that's happening here for spring, and it got worse again, and it got really bad. So it's finally calming down. Everything's settling back in. Kyle's back at work. I'm sort of back at work. I've done some work. We did some. What did we do? We did some racking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But six weeks in Egypt. Did we learn anything? Did we find out any, did we find any answers to any mysteries? 44 days. 44 days. 44 days. Yeah, a long time. (laughs) We learned some stuff. Oh, yeah, and Ben's here with us. Yeah, yeah. I've been waiting. uh, He's probably been waiting for me to mention that. Yeah, sorry. Ben is joining us. (laughs) Sorry about that. (laughs) I'm out of practice. It's all right. (laughs) How was your return, Ben? (laughs) Yeah. What have you been doing? Not much. I needed. I was in the same position. It was a little uh, worn out. Um, probably needed a bit of downtime more than anything else, just to not be moving. Yeah. Uh, constantly for a few days. I was a little, a little ill, just the usual exhaustion. I mean, I was tired. I, I, I at the end of that tour, I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, at the, it was a fantastic trip. I'd say this. We did. Yeah. We went from deserts to oceans. We did scuba diving. We were at the Red Sea with pyramids climbing around. Just. I mean, and it's, it's, you know, we don't set a super hectic pace, but it's, a you know, we're there to see stuff on these, on these trips and every day involves bus rides or we're in Jeeps and boats and yep. planes. And I mean, I was kind of counting down the flights by the end of the tour <laughs> on how many flights it'd take to get back home. And then, uh, yeah, I, and being a bit of a homebody anyway, I was just, um, I was a little, little, little ill for a couple of days, but yeah, I think sleep ultimately fixed that. But yeah, I'm just found myself to be just terribly behind on everything else. Like I, you know, it, it, yeah. you take out six weeks and it's just like, man, I've got a lot of stuff to catch up on. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that the, the scuba diving, the scuba diving was awesome. Um, Epic. Mind blowing. Yeah. 80 feet. We were not yeah, supposed to go that far. Yep. Busted through the limits. A little, uh, a little <laughs> below the floor of our open water certification there, but, uh, it was amazing. There were no police down there. Yeah. Turned no, out. We did there not was, get busted. Was, you were fine. No one was, to stop us. It was, <laughs> it's fine. There was one time when the when our guide like grabbed Laura and just like pulls her up. Yeah, because she kept going <laughs> down. Just sinking. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> and we were on a wall. We are on this beautiful wall dive ah, in the Red Sea. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. That was, and it kept going. That but was it, incredible. Yeah. It was cool. And you were right. It, it's open. I think, yeah, your open water is 18 meters and then advanced is 30 meters. And then yeah. there's a deep dive at 40 meters, which is... Narc territory, narc yeah. territory, but yeah, yeah. We all, I think we got to what it was at 80 feet, I guess 26, 27 meters. I think was the, yeah. the deepest dive. My, one. my spiffy, fancy new dive watch said 81 mm. feet was my max depth. I think Laura was go. below me when I was down there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, it was amazing. And you know, it's uh, for anyone who hasn't done that kind of diving, you don't even realize. I can see how you can easily go too far if you're not really paying attention because i mean we're just going down you know and i'm looking at the fish and the walls and the just how Mm -hmm. amazing it is and then i suddenly i look at my watch and starts yeah my watch starts (laughs) tapping me it's like and i look oh man all the numbers are red it's telling me i'm too deep (laughs) yeah Yeah, wall dives are tricky i've done a bunch of them um you do have to watch your depth because it is easy to just sort of diagonally just drift down and then you find yourself i'm like damn i'm at 35 meters i shouldn't be here and yeah uh, it just, it would well, just, I mean, it's fine. You just, you have to just take it easy going back up, but it limits your bottom time is the main thing. Yeah. Um, the deeper you go, I mean, most, you know, recreational diving is those tables are very safe. 
Uh, they're built around all sorts of different physiologies, and it's it's mostly about how it's all no decompression diving. So it's 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 all about how slowly you um you, you ascend back up, back up and yeah. you do all that safely. It's fine to to go down deep, but it, all it does is just you just use more air and you shorten up your dive. So I've done a lot of diving, and over the years, I mean, I I, I love sort of 15, 16 meters is fantastic because you can be there for an hour, you know, yeah, and you see all the stuff. So I can't be there for an hour, not on a Russ fifteen, hard, not bro. on a fifteen liter tank. <laughs> <laughs> Our dives were yeah. what forty five minutes, and every time I minutes, Russ, Russ was blowing yeah. clouds in there, just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was watching it, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You were buddy breathing with the instructor, I think, yeah, every time. Yep, he grabbed you. I, I, I'd run over and look at your, uh, at your thing, and like, and tap the thing, and say he's at seventy bar, and I was yeah, like, oh, come here. Yeah, and we're still at on, forty feet. Put you on the hose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, put you on the hose for a few minutes. Yep, just extend it out. Yeah, yep. Nah, it was good. It worked out. Yeah, that stuff all comes. It's, need it's a bigger all... tank. We or have a shorter dive. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, no, those weren't the big tanks. Come on. They were bigger tanks. Give me an 18 sure or a 20. Tanks. <laughs> we'll just get you two. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It but, was incredible, man. The boat, like we rented the boat, and I was expecting like a little speed boat or whatever. Yeah. And it was this huge boat. Yeah. And we went to the dock, and there's like there's all these people. Crowding onto these boats, we had our own. <laughs> yeah, like, wow. Yeah. How did this happen? <laughs> this is cool. It's like a triple decker boat. It had <laughs> yeah. three levels. Like, yeah. was it three or two? Yeah, it was three. three. Yeah. It, well, three if you count the engine room, I guess. But yeah, it was very cool. But you could have put 60, 70 people on this boat. Yeah, I don't know, fifty people maybe. But we had, you know, ten. Yeah. So it was good. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so Lila. that's the plan for the next one. I think we enjoyed it so much that I think the next uh, we and Yusuf loves it too. He, you know, he's gonna he keeps talking about getting certified. He did do the intro to scuba dive, so he did a little bit of that. He's yeah. just where they put you on and operate the gear for you and take you down whatever yeah. five or seven meters and float around. But that's the plan for the next one is to try and do an extension for people that are interested in um, getting certified. We can uh, you can get certified in the Red Sea, and uh, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a really great way I think to end a. a a two week trip in Egypt would be to go, let's go and spend five or six days on the Red Sea, which is just beautiful, chill. You don't have to dive or do anything, but it's just a beach, snorkel, coral. And for people that want to dive and they want to, even if they, or if they already are certified, if they want to get certified, we can make that part of it get certified. And at the end, we all go out on a boat, private charter on a boat. We all go dive and snorkel together. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic day out. And uh, I think that'd be a lot of fun. And then, yeah, because in the future, I'd I'd love to. I do. We this is why I've been at you guys for years to get you certified because I we've got I got plans. I think we can. Yeah. Uh, there's so many interesting spots around the world to dive, as it relates to you know just megalithic ruins and stuff. Apart, just diving itself is cool, but you know Indonesia, yeah. Japan, yep, Malaysia, all these places. There's a lot of these places <clears throat> to go and dive on. Namadol, all these other things. Yeah, uh, I think would be really interesting. Um, Graham Hancock, as you know, spent years and years doing that, investigating these things underwater. I think it's a huge part of this. So, yeah, that uh, that's the plan. Yeah. Well, was it the uh, the the last day in in Aswan on the Feluca ride? Ben and I sat up on the top deck on the couch on top of the boat. We didn't get <laughs> off the boat the whole time. We went to the beach. We sat yeah. on the boat and we discussed future plans. <laughs> we did. And like, where are we going to dive? How are we going to do it? Yep. Where are we going to go? We looked at maps. We're like, yes, we can circle around here. So we do have plans for that. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. And yeah, it would be cool if we we take people to Egypt and then some of them want to do this extension and they get their certifications, and then we go yep. on some dives there in Egypt and then those people might want to go with us to these this like extended, exactly dive tour. Yeah. yeah, it's my plan to to turn this whole thing into a basically a dive tour because <laughs> that's diving's way more fun. I mean, it, well, it's not way more fun, but yeah, it's fun. It is. I'm just like, yeah, we can we can actually train the audience for people that want to come on these yeah. tours because it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it'd be fun to take people to some of these spots, man. I, and you know, just I think you could mix it with regular diving because there's just in in those, in those parts of the world. I mean, there's just incredible diving everywhere. Yeah. But but you know, South China Sea that the uh, the equatorial Southeast Asia area is full of amazing diving. I spent years doing that when I lived in Singapore and yeah, that would be, that would be fun. So what are some of the, um, some of the new stuff that's happening there? Really interesting. Like for example, at Abu Sir and Abu Ghraib, they've been doing some work, yeah. right? And so there's a causeway that comes down 
And, you know, later we'll, <clears throat> we might do some lives and show this, but for now, I'll just describe it because um, we all have yeah. pictures and videos of this. But uh, there's a series of pyramids there, uh, and, they're, and they do have causeways. And one of them has a causeway that comes down Abu Sir, and it comes down into the desert, and it kind of vanishes, sort of disappears like a lot of these causeways do, like they've either been dismantled or they're totally buried. But it's noticeable in, in off a couple of these pyramids, you can see the causeway sort of goes down, it disappears, but then farther out in the desert, there's this hole in the desert where there's grasses, <laughs> scrubs, and trees growing. Right. And um, at Abu Sir, they have gone into one of these holes where we had previously seen it full of grass and and oh, yeah. uh, and trees and stuff, but they've burned all that up, cleared it out of there, and started digging. And there is a some kind of structure there. Like a valley temple. Yeah. Potentially. It's whatever the structure is at the end of the causeway, it seems like. Yeah, that's really cool, that area, because I've got footage from back in like 20, man, 2016, uh, and maybe even 2015, where, where we were bush bash in that area, like trying to get into those reeds, because mm. we heard story, and Yusuf at that time, who I just met in 2015, was telling me, oh, there's blocks in here. You know, there's channel blocks, and there's tube drills, and and, but they're in these blocks, and so you're bush bashing. You can't really get in there. It's just like yeah. thick reeds and, and bush, and you worry about snakes and stuff. And so I've, I've tried to get in there a couple of times, and so I was super happy to see, oh, man, they've actually cleared this out. Yeah. And not only that, they've actually excavated. Yep. And they've cleared out this area that's like full of granite and basalt and these precision cut blocks and a bunch of brand new tube drill holes that I've never seen, like really actually some really good ones that have been preserved. Uh beneath the sand or whatever's there but there's you know it's it's 100 percent in line with everything else that's at abu Sia. but yeah fantastic to see some some new work coming up and yeah I, i'd love to that's one of those future videos i want to make just looking at some of that new stuff that we saw there yeah and there's a it's hard to tell exactly what the like what would the structure have looked like but it seems like on so from like looking down the causeway away from the pyramid to the right there was what looks like a, I don't know what you would call it, architecture, like a, but like a porch. It's the exterior part of the temple, yeah. but it has this beautiful uh, section of, bas those are basalt blocks, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, they, the they, yeah. And that, well, and, and then the walls too are encased in yeah, basalt. The, the wall is encased mm -hmm. and it's, it's like beautifully done uh, with, you know, with non-standard, not, they're not square. They're, they have tilted lines and the blocks are bigger or smaller. Uh, in this sort yeah. of like classical uh, cyclopean style, yeah, but it looks like, like it would have there too, yeah. like a granite gateway. Yeah, and there's column bases too. So there must have been big columns there because there's big columns at the other end of the causeway. At right, the single piece granite columns are at the other end of the causeway at, at Abu Sir at the at least at the um, I think that's New Sarah. Is it New Sarah or is it the other one, um, Sahu Ray or something? I think it's it's. But yeah, I think there's, there must have been a structure with you know, column bases, a roof, yep, a, a gateway going into it. This sort of typical kind of granite gateway, and that's where we saw some tube drills uh, in the granite blocks that were there. Yeah, and it has that same sort of flat basalt floor, and there's all these bits of stone laying all over the place. The, the typical kind of combination. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah and really the, bas cool. the so the basalt floor is really interesting because it has a you can see in the paving stones uh the fracture pattern of the natural rock and in some yeah. places the fracture pattern is it looks like it's got an octagonal pattern in there like it like you know it kind of looks like a turtle shell but it also it looks like it would have been kilometer basalt if it would have crystallized in a different like a slightly different like it was close to becoming kilometer basalt but it didn't quite but the fracture pattern is still there of the mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. octagonal pattern in some of the blocks and then the other ones have this these strange veins of what look like shattered basalt strewn through them in almost a, um, a liquid pathway or like, a, you know, like the, it's hard to describe, but I've got all these pictures of it, but <clears throat> you can see what it looks like there were fractures in the rock. So there's a natural yeah. fracture pattern. And then at a later period, there was another injection of liquid like magma that gets in, exploits the fractures, spreads them apart. And then cools in a different way and leaves a, a new basaltic material in there, but it's all uh, it's all in pieces. But that material was taken from from the quarry and then polished into the to the floor, you know, to the floor tiles. And then over time, those newer flows have 
remo- that the material has fallen out and now you see like it looks shattered like glass like it's yeah. been it's been exploded but i think that's just a that's just a like an effect that's happened to the basalt itself but initially when we went there i thought what happened to these tiles <laughs> you know i was thinking that this happened after this the construction but i think it must be you know it must be part of the the rock <clears throat> itself but I don't know. I'm not a geologist. I have no idea. But that was my idea from seeing it this time. I was thinking, why would, uh, what is the purpose of building a temple at the base of the ramp? That you need to slide your stones up to build the pyramid. Yeah. Is that just like, this is part <laughs> of the job. We're going to build this giant ramp up to the pyramid from the valley that floods by the Nile. And then... As soon as we're done with construction, we'll build a temple where it floods. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. what is the deal with that? Because <laughs> well, the idea, I mean, that's, that too, is not just a ram in mean, that causeway. It's a causeway. It was cased. In I know it's a causeway, limestone. but but I'm I'm just asking these <laughs> standard story questions. Like, yeah. yeah. They they say yeah. that the causeway was the ramp that they brought the, blocks, the blocks in up. on the boats, yeah. and then they drag them up that ramp to build the pyramid. But, like, there's I mean, a temple at the bottom of the causeway. So it's always what? a temple. Yeah. <laughs> it's always, yeah. it's just nothing else. It couldn't be anything other no. than a temple. It's right. Always a temple. <laughs> but it, that's the particular causeway. That one also has channel blocks running. Like, that's the one I point at that shows there is channel blocks that run all the way underneath this thing, like yeah. subfloor infrastructure. We saw a lot of on this tour. In fact, I found a few new uh, blocks of it and a few new examples of it. Uh, at Abu Sia, though, there's there's the end of that causeway that used to be in the dirt before that reedy patch. That's now buried again, but you used to be able to see where that channel block. There were blocks right at the end of the causeway that went under it, and now it's cut. That's all covered in sand now. Um, but you you would see that, and then there's a few places where it's exposed walking up the causeway. So there's this, you know, this underground infrastructure. Particularly, I mean, said a lot of these old kingdom sites, most of them that are on that that you know, the Sun Belt, all of those pyramid sites, you see evidence for these channel blocks on all of those sites. Yeah. But at Abyssir, it's it's still pretty intact. Like they were, in fact, that might have been the reason they tore up the whole, the big area in front of the pyramid so much is to get it if there were copper pipes in those or something. Mm-hmm. Ah. Some sort of infrastructure. The user thinks they might have actually been ripping up the floor to get at the copper because you still see the channel blocks that are running all under this big square, this big sort of the big, basically the pavement, what was beneath the floor of this big structure that sat in front of the pyramid, you know, you've got these channeled blocks in the ground and they run all over the place under the ground under there and there's wide joins and they, yep, you know, they, they, they have all this, Can't be this a rope complex guide. arrangement. <laughs> yeah, like, not a rope the guide. The rope guide argument yeah, it for doesn't the channel, work, it's no. like, what, like, no, there's, there's why, no. like you got a rope that wise, like it splits <laughs> oh, two yeah. different directions. <laughs> it's a rope I don't know. guide. No. And then there's bowls, yeah. you know, to collect the rope. I don't know. It doesn't make <laughs> any sense. Right. There's bowls at the end of it, right? And yeah, so some of this stuff, we see the quartzite bowls that, that, that these things exit into, uh, which are hard to make out of a, you know, a tough type of stone. There's even one, one of the angles when you go over to the other courtyard at Abyssir, it actually point. There's a there's a channel block that comes out and it points directly at the pyramid. Like it's whether or not it yeah. went into the pyramid, I don't know, but it's sort of that's where the, the blocks stop. But who knows what was there before that? It, it's the rope guide theory. I think Robert Temple came up with that primarily as a trying to explain the the channel block that's in the Sphinx Temple at mm-hmm. Giza. That that big. Granite yeah. block that seems to now run that through one, a shaft that goes nowhere. That one nowhere. could be a rope guy. That one, yeah, but that one, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense <laughs> to me joking. at all. It's just, yeah. it, it goes under the wall and into the, it, like, it, it comes out of the ground in the temple and then goes beneath the the exterior wall of the temple and into Into a, the bedrock. There, well, yeah, well, there's like an alleyway there uh, that's basically the, the, the a small space that's between the outer wall of the temple and the bedrock cutout that they put the temple in. What an interesting yeah, way the enclosure to enclosure wall. Yeah, an enclosure wall. That's, and the, this this channeled block set goes beneath dives into it. Yeah, and then just dives into the bedrock <laughs> there. It goes down again and it just it's doesn't make bizarre. any sense. Yeah. If we, mm, and we got in there for the first time too. There? We got into that alleyway. Yeah. Sorry, Colin. And yeah. No, I'm just well, what's down there? I mean, they must be going somewhere. Going well, it's, somewhere. I mean, and you've got to get access. Like, there's a channel. Like, whether or not it doesn't matter what you think was the purpose of that channel block. Like, it, you don't. 
put a block in with a channel and you have to get something in there. Like it has to be, Yeah. This it's obviously functional. I don't care if people think it's a sewer or whatever it is, it, whatever you think it is, there's something at the other end of that. Right. right? Yeah. There has to be. Yeah. So how are you accessing that? Is there just some passage going into that enclosure wall somewhere? There's no obvious, there are doors sort of outside the Sphinx temple that are closed that go in that direction. It could be underground. I think it uh, might be could under, be. Yeah, There's so you, many yeah. tunnels. I mean, that that thing could go down into a tunnel. But I mean, yeah. how right? You, that's 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 again. That's the thing with with like so much stuff in Giza and elsewhere in Egypt. There are pits that are not excavated, and they have never, uh, in some, a lot of cases, been fully excavated. Certainly, none that we not that you know about. I mean, right. that's the other problem. I mean, you, there's literally hundreds of these doors. Just you, you have the giant pits. You know, these things go down a hundred feet or whatever, at least that you can see, and they're yeah. not ex not fully excavated. They they're very regular and very well cut. Yep. They've got grates over them. There's no real documentation on them. And then if you walk around and you, you spend you guys spent a, a day in yeah. one of those days off we had spent hours walking around the plateau and you you can literally find a hundred or more of these doors that have been sealed up, you know, and in, in some cases they've been sealed up for probably a hundred years. Yeah. Where the sand's three quarter filled that where that the bottom you know it's, it's the sands up to three quarters of the door now yep but they just it's just these passages that disappear into the into the bedrock that into these these side walls of quarry cuts and things and in some cases they've been bricked up right they've actually been sealed yeah fully sealed um cemented over i mean just i'm just it's fascinating to right. think of like well where's, where's the documentation where's the stuff? map like how is there yeah. not a <laughs> an enormous digital map of the entire of site with all of these tunnels and where they all go or where you know what do we know and what do we not know you know come on well if this we, was a video game i'd did, be looking for the freaking map <laughs> <laughs> we did uh <laughs> we did have that one uh, i guess i don't know if i can tell the story but we did get into that alleyway yeah, the alleyway that runs beside the Sphinx Temple, which is not—I've never been in there before—to basically look at where this channel block runs under the ground. Well, based on what happened wall. to us, get in there. I don't—I'm not sure anyone's been in there in a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had permission. Yeah. And so we had a special permission. I'll say this about the groups. So the groups that we were with were phenomenal. Like we already had six or seven, you know, special permissions on the trip, which is already more than pretty much anyone else does in on Egypt tours, but. That wasn't enough, and these guys, both tours, like we did one at the start, one at the end of that six weeks. Yeah. Both tours signed up for another three, I think, and yeah. we ended up doing ten. Ten, ten special total. permissions per tour. Unbelievable. Yeah. Per tour. Yeah, it was. I, I couldn't believe it. And Sphinx Temple wasn't on the itinerary, but we went in there. Yeah. Um, but so we had permission to get in there, and, and yeah, so they couldn't find the key, so we... <laughs> we uh, it was... <laughs> we did. We did take an alternative route to getting in there, which uh, they found a key. <laughs> they did. Oh, we did find a key. We got. Yes, we we found a key to open the door. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, in the shape of a crowbar. See, uh, universal it reminded, key. It reminded me of the <laughs> universal scene. Universal key. It was. Yeah. It reminded me of the scene from uh, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where he's in the library. Right, yeah. and she's stomp. Yeah, she's stamping clock. the books, and he's like, "Bam!" Right when she stamps the book. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a, yeah. And they're yeah. wailing on this thing, and the whole and we're all out there going, "Yeah." <laughs> we're all like, <laughs> <and this tank." laughs> uh, uh, Anyway, we we did get it off there. I remember Yusuf goes, he goes. I have just had a pleasure that few of will experience. Yeah. In Egypt. He was so happy that he got to bust a path. Yeah, I got to bust the lock off there. Yeah. Ah, it was awesome. We were there with the inspectors, just to be clear. Like we yeah. were there with the inspector who should have had the key and he's like, stuff it, break it, we'll get another padlock, which then we came back and did it again uh, a month later and there was he, a new lock on and there. He had and he had a proper yeah. key. They yeah. had the key. Yeah. 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 He has yeah. a they, the guy has a wad of keys and he's like looking he through and you know, most of them are rusted and unidentifiable. And he's like <laughs> he's trying to figure out which one opens this rusted, unidentifiable lock, and just eventually <laughs> yeah. they broke it off there and and then yeah. replaced the lock with a new one, and then we were able to get in easy next time. <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah. But it was funny at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People like, what are you guys doing over there? <laughs> yeah, never, never mind, never yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like thirty people over there. <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, a great, yeah. great groups. Both, yes, man. Both oh. groups were great. So yeah, it really fun. was. Always yeah. is. Yeah, I, I just find that that alleyway interesting because, of course, they they cut the bedrock away. You know, much like the Sphinx, the the Sphinx Temple is also cut out of the bedrock, at least mm -hmm. the back half of it. And uh, 
And yet the outer wall on what, the north side is like 12 feet away from the bedrock cut. Like it's it's strange that that in the back of the temple, the temple itself is rock cut. There's like yeah. the walls are made of the bedrock. Bedrock. Yeah. And yet on that side, on the north side, they didn't it's blocks. Make rock. They didn't make the wall out of the bedrock technically. I mean, I guess that could have been the outer wall. But it's just strange. It's just an, it, an empty hallway. Yeah. That has nothing but that channel block section cut into the ground. Yeah. Maybe there's more under the ground. I don't know, but the, it's it's just so strange. It's like, okay, they 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 cut the bedrock down, then they move like twelve feet over and build a wall out of the bedrock yeah. blocks that they just cut out of the wall. It's it's strange. I mean, so much about that all. temple is is an enigma. Yeah, you're right. I think what you're pointing out is that the the part of the temple that's closest to the Sphinx is the bottom part of it is rock cut. It's rock cut. It's cut out of the bedrock. Yeah, and there are yeah. they left walls standing that are just bedrock. Yeah. But then yeah. this part, where they have obviously also cut it out of the bedrock, they nevertheless stacked blocks to make the exterior wall of the temple 12 feet 12 away, feet from, the wall, away right? from a bedrock wall. <laughs> this is like, it is very strange. Yeah. And you, I it, just, you know, spending that much time or the, as, as much time as we have going around and looking at the engineering aspects of these buildings and sites, like it's clear that they had their reasons. They had yeah. a plan. Uh, they, they were masters of their craft, so that's that's the curious thing about it. Why did they do this? Because you know already that these were genius builders. Yeah. Why? So it's so strange that that would be a feature. I don't know. It's just fascinating to me. Some of the other stuff we like when we we did our uh, between tour walk <clears throat> in Giza. That was fantastic because you know Kyle and I have spent a lot of time at various. Uh, large pieces of land where there's many, many acres and it's rough and rugged. And if you spend some time out there and walk it, instead of just driving down the roads, but you actually get out and you you walk the land and you go between the different... Uh, wander it. Yeah. yeah, you wander it. You know, you go between the different landmarks, you walk up and down the canyons, you check out the hilltops, but you do it on foot. You really get a much better feel for the land itself. And so every time we've gone to Giza, it's been in the context of like, we drive up there in the bus, we all get out of the bus, we check some things out, we get back on the bus, and then the bus circles around to another place on the plateau, we get back out and we do so. So this time to go out there, we just went in the main entrance, well, the, the entrance near Yusuf's shop, and just spent all day walking, you know, with no guides, no one telling us what to do, you know, and well, except for Plenty of people tried to tell us what to do. <laughs> we we told them to f off. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, we discovered the secret. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was just so much amazing stuff, like climbing around, and you realize, like, there is. Uh, well, for one thing, just doing, like I was saying, just walking it, we I got a much better feel for the size of the place. Like we actually walked between all the pyramids. We checked out all the satellite pyramids. Uh, we went to the edges of the. We went down to. Um, Kinkawas, walk through that area. We've been there before, but, you know, to walk through this stuff instead of being taken there. Um, but, yeah, looking at, area. yeah, looking at the satellite pyramids, it's very interesting because the, both sets, there's two sets of three, one near the Great, one set near the Great Pyramid and the other set near uh, Minkara. They, the first thing I notice is that both sets have this similar aspect where there's one that looks very pyramid-like, and then there's a second one, the one in the middle, that looks more like a mastaba, and then the third one is very destroyed. Both sides Apparently. have this. Mm. It's really strange um, that it's that that there's that there's in such similar conditions, you know. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. That those satellite pyramids are fascinating. There's something that I mean not to. I like your point about walking around. I've done the same thing in the past. I didn't go with you guys that time. I was I was a tired, mm -hmm. tired little boy. <laughs> yeah, the hotel. I was. I like, told him. No, I was like, I'm not going to the pyramids. <laughs> I told him I was like, you we're making all go. the discoveries. He was like, I had a great nap. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I had a good nap. I'm like, I I seen it. I seen it. I, seen <laughs> I discovered four hours <laughs> of sleep while you guys were walking. <laughs> yeah, I've done, I mean, I have done the same. I'm glad you guys did that because I, I mean, I've done the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, a few times and. Yeah, but that it's, I those just to just for a minute. I that, those satellite periods are interesting because I finally, uses I think been trying to tell me this for a couple of years, and it was he was pointing out something that I finally tweaked to, 
on this trip, which is that there is very strong evidence for for basically fourth dynasty recycling, recycling. Going on in the construction yes. of those. I've been saying this too. Of yeah, those I mean, I, of those satellite pyramids, yeah. like those things are made, and it's very clear when you see it. They're made from recycled blocks that they got from somewhere else. Yeah, and they, apparently these there's no debate that these were, this is all main you know standard model says they're fourth dynasty like queens and daughters or whatever. Well, the daughters. Yeah, there's yeah. a funny story the about daughter the story, daughter, yeah. right? The daughter story. It's a little. It's, <laughs> yeah, we're trying to explain this to <laughs> to some of the girls on too. What is he saying about this? Um, well, well, the story goes that <laughs> Khufu was broke at the time. Yeah, when he was trying to make this pyramid for his daughter, so he decided to rent the daughter out. Yeah. And, one stone uh, per got, suitor. <laughs> yeah, one stone per suitor. <laughs> so she was a busy girl, and that's how we built the pyramid. And Yusuf always then picks up a small rock and goes, "How much do I get? What do I get for this stone?" You know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hilarious story. It is a funny story, but yeah, yeah wait, depends is, on your is that actual Egyptian myth about this, or is I that don't a joke? Know where it comes from? Yeah, I, I mean, it's some sort of myth from time. I mean, it, yeah. it is a story that comes down from. I mean, I don't know where it comes from. I've not really done the research. I can't imagine. Yeah. it's particularly accurate, but there's some <laughs> sort of rumor. Well, just yeah, a dirty I, rumor. I, yes, right. Uh, yeah, false fake news. You know, um, <laughs> but but yes, the yeah, that's the those evidence are the are recycled. recycled. Yeah, that's really cool. There's yeah. quarry mark. Like, like literally you see the shapes. And they're, they're stones that have finished surfaces and, in fact, they may have come off some other structure. Yeah, yeah. That then they, these finished surfaces have got quarry marks on them where they, were, where they were basically painting like fix this, like chip this off, like yeah. straighten this out and make it into that pyramid casing stone on the outside because it's that Tura limestone, but it's come from somewhere else. And then, you you know, you can see where they've done it and there's unfinished parts of it and then there's blocks where they never actually started to touch them and it's not – in that pyramid shape, it's it's really interesting. I'm like, yeah, they were definitely pulling stone from somewhere else to make these things. But yeah. when you go to the satellite pyramids of Mikare, they have the exact same granite casing stones. Right. right. They they look exactly the same as the ones on Mikare. So it's like yeah. the the limestone casing from the Great Pyramid or whatever. It's they've also got Tura on the. Satellite pyramids and then the granite casing on Menkara. The satellites have also been, have granite. Do you guys go in there? Have you guys been in that satellite pyramid? Mm -hmm. Menkara? Didn't go inside, no. Okay. I think somebody was it's offering. Well made inside. Uh, somebody was offering to take us in there. Um, right. But, I mean, he was basically trying to tell us there's a statue or something and we could go in, right? I don't remember. But it, it also seemed at first like he was telling us not to be where we were and we I kept was doing my best it. to ignore yeah. everyone talking yep. to me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the risk. It's it's tough to do when you're out there and you don't have a an Egyptian with you. you yeah, will definitely get um, a lot of attention from the from the vendors and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So our our general policy is just to try to ignore everybody who's yelling yeah. at us. Yeah, that's the right way to do it. Yeah. Yep. But this guy had a whistle, so he was trying to be a, like <laughs> he was trying to like act like he was. Yeah, he kept like blowing this whistle at us, and we're like, what? You know, are we doing something wrong or whatever? But then it turned out he wanted to uh, for us to pay for him to take a photo. Yeah, and then he wanted to take us into some spot or whatever. We're like, dude, get out of here with your freaking whistle! You know, yeah. stop acting like a freaking lifeguard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just... they do it. I mean, a lot of people pretend to be in a some yeah. sort of position of authority, and they're not. It's just that's yeah, they prey on prey on that Western instinct to yeah, you know, you know, you you know, you're not in your own culture. So if someone tells you to do something, you're more likely to pay attention. I think that that right. gets leveraged quite heavily. Yeah, to the visitors to the plateau. Yep. Well, there's more to say on, on Giza, but let's take a break. Yeah. Right? All right. Awesome. back ladies and gentlemen brothers of the serpent podcast cheers to you all uh, so yeah. good to be back cheers it was great to be there it is but it's it's also great to be back and yeah. good to be back in the studio doing a podcast great to have ben on as yep. usual or a swap cast however you want to describe it yep yeah. maybe he will actually publish another podcast 
after we do this. <laughs> you should put this on your podcast feed. <laughs> Probably going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do need to make some more podcasts. Yeah, I was so excited. A new <laughs> Uncharted X podcast had come out. You need to invite four me on. To go. <laughs> you need to invite me on. I got hot takes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Russ's turn next. Yeah, time. it's my turn. Yeah, that was, no, no, no. That was no. fun. I need part two. <laughs> we'll definitely no, do part just... two as well. I think we should do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, the thing that really uh, struck me this time in Egypt was the this idea of the primordial mound. I know I talked about it a lot while we were there, but um, you know. A little window into that idea, I think, was the first time we went with you in, what, 2022? 21. 21. Mm -hmm. Was the Kent Kawas Pyramid on the, yeah. the plateau. Now, yeah. that primordial mound is exposed. Yep. Now, you can see it's it's they've literally shaped the bedrock into this somewhat angular shape. And then they've stacked, you know, there's a bunch of blocks stacked on top of it, but you can see the depressions on the sides where they had kind of fit other blocks to it to make what I would assume would have been a pyramid shape. And so that was kind of a window into the this idea of the, of the primordial mound, this natural bedrock that exists that they didn't remove. So then we went to... Um, the mountaintop pyramid, I keep forgetting the name of it. Uh, Abu Rawash. Abu Rawash. Fascinating. That, that, it, and it's very similar to Kent Kawas, but huge, much bigger. Mm -hmm. And I kind of see that pyramid as the same thing. Like what we're looking at there is the primordial mound that's at the yeah. top of this mountain. And you can see how they sort of stair step, cut it. They shaped the bedrock. And the bedrock itself is kind of, it's not good. Uh, mm. I wouldn't consider it great structural material. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of different layers of limestone, some of which are like a really loose conglomerate. Some are highly fractured um, chert that's yep. not, it's not very well solidified. It's just, it's, it's full of fractures. So it's, you could just see it's just falling out of there. There's some chalk layers, really soft stone. And there's a lot of, um, uh, what's the crystal, the, the calcite crystals. Yeah. In, and big layers of it too. And you get up there and you, you know, the first thing I did when we got there the first time was I just started walking around it slowly and, and looking at how they were, they literally at the bottom of it, they're fitting casing, granite casing stones up against the bedrock. Yeah. So like that bedrock, yep. that was the outside of the pyramid. And of course, as you go up, you can follow the angle it's truncated, like they've the bedrock's cut off. It's this huge flat area up there. If you climb up on top of the bedrock, mm. you can walk around. It's just giant. So they flattened the top of it. And then there's just massive limestone blocks laying around up there that must have been part of the core masonry. Um, so they they literally built like a hat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The pyramid <laughs> yeah. is it's pyramid shaped and then it's sort of it's like yeah. this hat that fits on this piece of bedrock that they bedrock shape yeah. and there's a well, giant also, hole in the bedrock up there. yeah i was gonna yeah. say yeah there's a giant well they, excavation in there. that's that's the thing i'm i the way i look at that now is like okay this is how they're they're preparing for the internal subterranean Structure. chamber yeah. and possibly upper chambers and then they've got they've they've made this huge like a hallway into the center of this primordial mound yeah that yeah. is angled down like it would have been the descending passageway and of course the rock is falling off the walls and it's yeah. the ground's all rubble. And so you can imagine, like I I, I would like to see Kent Kawas descending passageway again because I think it was lined with granite. Yeah. And that I think the, the descending passageway of Kent Kawas was also cut into the bedrock, but of course they lined it. There's these huge granite blocks laying in there. There are. Yeah. So yeah, it just got me thinking like this is, you know, you cut this this huge pit into the primordial mound. Then you cut this long hallway down to the bottom of the pit. Then you case all that stuff in stone. You can make your tunnels. You can make ascending passageways in that thing. I mean, you think about mm -hmm. it. You can go halfway down that descending passageway and then start a tunnel upwards as you're, as you're filling you that masonry. Yeah. And you could have multiple rooms in that place. Yeah. Sure. So I was, that was yeah, just... I, I, 
Go ahead. I was going to say, I think you're right. I mean, I think there, there was, it's, you go there and it looks like this giant, some people think, oh, this was an observatory or something. It's because it's so open to the sky. Like yeah. you, you're in this huge, big, wide descending passage and then there's big space in the bottom. But I think there's plenty of evidence that just suggests that's not what it was originally in that it was probably cased and built, had a mm -hmm. roof and it probably had chambers and structures above it. Cause absolutely, it's obvious that the gap at the top was spanned, but it wouldn't, you couldn't just span that thing with stone beams and expect to sit a pyramid on top of it. Like the, the weight of that, right. you have to build that support up from below. So there's probably, yeah, smaller <laughs> chambers. And then it could have been multiple chambers all the way up into the structure. Absolutely. And from a construction yeah. standpoint, this is genius because you think it's, well, it's a lot of work to cut that huge, channel down in there and then cut this giant pit. But you have, if you started from the ground surface, you would have to quarry all the blocks somewhere. So you'd be yeah. cutting way more. Yeah. In this fashion, you're, you're utilizing the ground for almost a third of the pyramid's height, perhaps mm. the bedrock itself. And all you're having to do is cut this channel and this pit, and then you can fill that in with the really nice you know, uh, some of those high still quality in there, stone. Yeah. There were a few really There's high quality ones. High quality blocks laying yeah. down on the bottom. Yeah. Some fitted up yeah. against the wall. Uh, and there's granite too. I mean, yeah. A lot of it yeah. Was not just limestone. Yeah. So that was, that was really interesting. And it was just, I, I just really <laughs> landed it for me that the idea of yeah. the primordial, because I was like, you know, it's this primordial man. I'm kind of imagining, you know, you see the diagrams of the Great Pyramid and it's this little mountain. <laughs> it's it's like, no, no. I, I mean, I would be willing to bet inside the Great Pyramid there's, there could be a, a shaped bedrock, gigantic shape plug. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And it, that was, I was going to say, that's the, that was something I learned too. And from you guys looking at that, because it's not just the, the center of these things either. It's, these pyramids all have bedrock features too. Yes. Like, like yeah. the, like the, we were talking about the Sphinx uh, temple where it's got walls made from bedrock. I mean, it's, I've talked about it and done videos on the, the middle pyramid or the Kuf, uh, Kufra pyramid having that, you know, there's the southwestern corner, there's like seven courses of it are yeah. carved directly from the bedrock and it folds in. But it's a, probably a lesser known fact that the same, not to the same extent, but you also have big bedrock features. That that serve to lock in the Great Pyramid as well. So that, it's not just yeah. this primordial man in the center. Yes. There's these there's these bedrock blocks in it around the corners. And you guys are pointing out. I think what that was, what was the thing that, that blew like my mind. Eastern corner, the yeah. northeast corner of the Great Pyramid. That was the part it's that blew my flint. mind. I was like, it's flint. It's literally like a, a massive. It's flint a nodule. humongous flint nodule, and it's got this natural like weird winding cave that goes in there. I think. In in the the more I observed it, it looks like it may have been a massive fossil bed, like just a just a mm. a huge collection of maybe all these different shells. There's there's like the big spiral ones yep. that are in mm. there, and I know some of those are out in the limestone bedrock as well. But it looks like it possibly was some kind of big, maybe a coral feature, full of all these shells or whatever. And it just, I mean, it's flint. Yeah, but it's, it's like knobs. It's got all these knobs and weird shapes yeah. in it. But shaped into shaped into, you know, basically that Stair, coarse stepped coarse step shape pattern. of the pyramid, yeah, yeah. and also not ever intended to be exposed to the outside because because the case case stones are all gone, and then like you know you've got another four or five or six feet of stones that are outside of this, but they actually they, this this is like this is so much more effort to like lock that structure in or something like it's 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 a uh, and you see it there's other blocks around there too that are bedrock yeah like individual yeah. blocks that are like okay this is like a a key that then this serves to kind of lock that structure i mean not like it's going anywhere but <laughs> they were they, i don't know man what what's it, what, it, I, yeah I, I wonder why they did this like what i mean is it not easier to from a planning and logistics perspective just to like all right we're going to cut this thing flat or at least we're just going to level off and we're just going to plan this with blocks but no we're going to we're going to shape these particular areas on each side of it that, that are just going to be from bedrock that just are still attached to the ground. Then we can build the structure around them. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing. When I'm sorry, yeah. but when you people say like, oh, you know, they they flattened the bedrock and the whole thing is like flat to within you know a quarter of an inch or whatever over all this space, and it's like, well, no, actually, and they then, they just they just cut like if you think of that northeast corner, there's like we're going to make this cut here out of the bedrock and then we're going to fit a stone to case it and that stone 
where it sits is going to be within a quarter inch flat of the whole thing. It's <laughs> yeah. like, dude, yeah. this is nuts. Yeah. I mean, it is nuts. <laughs> and you can see that. I just love the idea that you know the the construct the the foreman out there, and he's looking at the architect, and he's like, why, why are we leaving this? Um, <laughs> thing of flint, and the guy's like, "So it doesn't move." <laughs> and he's, he's like, like well, "It's six million tons." Move. <laughs> see, I think, see, this is this is the other thing that that comes up to me, and who's going to steal it? <laughs> yeah, the Sphinx Temple drove this home too. That that they are they are they have to be cutting the bedrock at the same time that they're casing it. Yeah, yeah. I ca I came to this conclusion from really just like obsessing over these two hallways in the Sphinx temple. And I'm just like, there's no way the bedrock cutting guy can come in here and just decide to leave these random angles sticking out of what otherwise would have been a straight hallway. Just leave like a big chunk sticking yeah. out of the wall. Yeah. He can't make those decisions without the stones casing it, being there ready, yeah. being prepped and being put in as it's being cut. So yeah. I, I mean, there's I, bedrock nubs in that place. Like they literally do this yeah. in the floor, in a, like a smaller version of what the pyramid is. Yeah, yeah. If you think it's it, sticking up out of the floor, if you yeah. think of an architect designing it on paper, he doesn't know what's under the bedrock. So, yeah, he he, so yeah. the architect designs it. Then, then the limestone cutter cutting crew comes in. <laughs> they would just cut it to match the design, but no, that's not what was happening. Mm. Somebody was cutting as the building was being built at the same time. It's like, so that's that's yeah. what I was go going back to this chunk in the corner of the Great Pyramid. But well, oh, you know, we can we can we can go a little speculative here and say maybe they did know what was in the limestone before they cut it out. Well, like this, yeah. They just were like, yeah, this one spot, leave that nub. Yeah, one foot or there's a, one there's foot a, diameter. There's a just, dense. There's a <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a dense collection of flint right here. We're gonna leave this as part of the corner. It's it's six meters down. Yeah, that I'm talking. I'm not. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like the big these big nub protrusions oh, on yeah. the floor of the. Of yeah. the I mean, come on. They're yeah. just they're the same yeah, as yeah. the rest of the limestone. It's like yeah. somebody's making that decision because they have the tile. Yeah. And yeah. They're like, yeah, we'll we'll cut a hole in this tile because yeah. it's already got this crack or whatever. Just got to fit. Yeah. It's, yeah. It just yeah. It makes it so much more. I mean, everything's. You can already tell from the shape and size of the stones that it's all pretty custom, right? It's not exactly it's like custom. dumping bricks bricks out and making it, but yeah, it's, yeah it, it speaks volumes to the planning and design that had to go into this, and maybe maybe a bit of the the, the ability for them to to I don't want to say that they do it on the fly because it I, feel, I don't think you can do this stuff on the fly, I'm, but it, it feels like suggesting. they're they've got they know you know they just have these options on. What I, direction to go? I mean, there must there must be a requirement for this. Like there, that's the other part. Like there has to be a a specification from whoever wants this thing to say because this isn't the easiest way to do. It. I mean, it's, none of this is the easiest way to do it. But this is even an even more ridiculously difficult way to do it. Right? It's yeah. There has to be a reason for it. Is one of the other things. It's like why 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 wouldn't you at the Sphinx Temple just make that flat bedrock and stick your floor tiles down? That's got to be easier. Yeah, then just, leaving yes, an odd assortment of bedrock nubs that poke up. <clears throat> now you have to modify all your floor tiles and design everything around it to make sure it fits. And yeah, not that's just why I think, not just nubs, but bedrock pits. You're filling yeah, the pits. Yeah, pits as well. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that you. It, I do think that there's a lot of stuff being done on the fly, but I think the geom the the geometrical design is in the is mind set. of the builders, right? Like you set the geometrical design. This is the the geometry and. This is the level of precision you're, you're, I mean, the, obviously the design can be very precise. And then the builders are, even though they're making decisions on the fly using the natural medium that they're working in, they're always working to that geometrical design specification. Mm. That's kind of the way I, I, I think about it. And then of course you're, there's these tolerances, which is what we've talked about in the unfinished presentation, which is like you've got all this excess material, you're just trying to make sure that it surpasses the lowest tolerance of how... Right. how and then you remove material. Yeah. yeah. So as long yeah. as it follows that, you're good to go. And, and you I come kinda, back and smooth it all out later. Come, come back and flatten the casing, the casing stones on the inside of the Sphinx Temple after it's done. Yeah. You know? And then in some cases, like you were pointing out in the, in the um, King's Chamber... 
that was not what they did. Yeah. They cut everything beforehand and stacked it precisely. Yeah. Yeah. There's no yeah, the blocks King's, going around corners. Yeah. King's chamber is a bit different, isn't it? It's it's just like perfectly well made. Yeah. yeah. And designed and plopped down. It's the outsides of the King's chamber that are flattened and softened in place. Like the above parts where you can see it in the pictures of the relieving chambers. They were yeah, yeah. scooping material out, mm -hmm. removing yeah. material there, and then above that, it's flattened flat probably the... previously, and then above that, it's there's more scoops and stuff. So I wonder yeah. what the king's chamber looks like on the outside of the blocks. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, we've seen it. Would, I yeah. think you're. I probably be probably be rough. Man, I'd love to get into that Cavillia's chamber. Yeah, you might I think be able we've seen some of those blocks. I think we've seen roughly what it looks like, and that would be in. In the southern, southern shaft, southern shaft the, and, and at the bottom of the... And in the bottom of... Uh, uh, step pyramid. Step yeah, pyramid. step pyramid. Yeah. That's that's what the I, outside of the king's chamber looks like. And those and both, like, again, like the southern shaft, I'm just like, yeah, this is this is pyramid prep, like right here. I mean, yeah. it's it's a shaft, and then they, <clears> they just didn't have the angle. Actually, they, they may have. I have some video of it. It looks like it was possibly... Well, the southern shaft, up. people won't know what that is. Like, that's another... I mean, that was also a first for me on this trip getting in there. Yeah. Uh, I've been wanting to get in there for some time because this this is like a – almost like a sister structure to what's beneath the step pyramid. It's another giant – it's like a replica almost. It, it's the same damn thing. It's Yeah. It's another giant shaft. Like if you think about what's beneath the step pyramid, you've got like an 80, 90-foot deep shaft that's 45 feet wide or wherever it is, and at the bottom you've got a 32-piece granite box. Yep. It's like a, cha a built chamber. Yeah. More or less. And then in the southern shaft, you have a giant shaft. It's, it's outside the pyramid. It's just it's outside the courtyard of the pyramid. It's a giant shaft. It's 80, 900 feet deep. It's 45 feet wide. And at the bottom of that, you've got a 32-piece granite box. It's basically <laughs> in, uh, an yeah. enclosure. Yeah. <laughs> like, or a chamber. Is it? Is it? I mean, it's it's how many buddy burials does Joseph need? It's just right. like there with Nefer yeah. and all his pyramids. It's is like, it, an, is, but isn't another it similar? Shaft just like it out near Winnie's pyramid. Yeah. So isn't this doesn't this kind of remind you of the the, the test passages near the Great I, Pyramid? I, yeah, but it's like we gotta go see the way to building another a whole box. I have yeah. to freaking see. I know these they did. They did. They granite. built a box. You're right. I mean, it, but it's 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 like there's there is a similar thing to this, right? There's a place where there's like a model yeah. of the yeah. stuff in the Great Pyramid, I or at least parts of it. I feel like yeah. I, I feel like it's all that 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 there is. <clears throat> something to this design like like I've said this before but we when you go into the to the king's chamber you just happen to go inside the box like everybody's yeah. like oh I want to get in the box in the king's chamber you're already in the box you're in the box you're in the big one you're yeah. in the box you're in the big box <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it's right. it's because when you go to other ones it's like you get down there or what up there wherever you're going to this chamber and there's a box there's this granite box yeah, yeah. The, the 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 great pyramid and I guess there's maybe uh, is there another granite chamber where you go into in another pyramid? I can't remember. Many of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean the third pyramid, Kara pyramid, the Kara has the pyramid. Granite chamber. They're all granite boxes. Yeah. You go They're inside. I mean, I mean just the one that you walk into it. Yeah. Right. There's a granite room. Yeah. So yeah. it's like those I feel like the step pyramid and the southern shaft are, are weird because you actually come to the outside of the, of the, of the granite box. It's like yeah. you know, we, yeah, the yeah. tunnel should actually go <laughs> in <laughs> to the inside. Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to be out in this antechamber. Outside around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not supposed yeah. to be seen. Yeah, and it the feels walls to like, yeah, probably were some, cased. Yeah, and well, there's a whole other that other shaft that's near Winnie's pyramid that you look down in. That's the same depth, same size. I mean, we don't know how deep it is because it's not buried, but it looks like there's a giant box down there as well. Like yeah. you see the lid of something down there. Yeah. And it just to me, I feel like at that whole area and I go, well, this is the old stuff, right? And then one of they just decided, well, we'll build a pyramid over this one over here because maybe there's other tunnels and other things going off from from that one. We don't know if there's other pyramids or, or sorry, other um, other tunnels and things going off from the other shafts, but there's miles of tunnels beneath Saqqara. But just the fact it's a carbon copy of what's beneath the... Um, Step pyramid is just amazing, like insane. Like, yeah. yeah, and the question is, is which one is the copy? Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, I, th I just think they're both. Yeah, I mean, my my brain goes to like, well, these are these are old. These are functional. They're older. They, they were doing something, and then later on, it's like because I firmly am in the camp of like, yeah, the step pyramid probably was the first pyramid that dynastic Egyptians made. Yeah, I, I think they made it. It's a tremendous effort, like four hundred thousand tons or something, and. You know what I? It's done with smaller stones. You can look at it and see it, but I think it was, yeah. I, I, 
I, I'm com- completely on board with that, but I think they built it over the top of yeah. a pre-existing yeah. Yeah. Uh, hole in the ground. Yeah. You know what I was thinking of when about this, like how there's, you know, there's this, the small version or whatever, and then next to it, there's a larger version. And then, you know, it, it kind of reminded me of the, um, of like what we do with particle accelerators. They're all connected to each other. Like, you know, I know <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is crazy. Like, Spitting I'm not, wait, go, let's go to particle accelerators. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But you build, <laughs> let's you, go there. You have a small one. Yeah. And you look at the history, even of CERN, it's the same way. When they start up the, the particle accelerators, the smallest, oldest one starts first. They turn yeah. that one on and it begins the acceleration, right? And they run that one for a while until it gets to its max energy level. And then it's got a, uh, a tangent a, a tangent <laughs> that goes to the next big one that they built 20 years after they built this first one. And then it circles on that one for months until it gets, and then bam, it gets shunted over to the biggest one, to the Large Hadron Collider. And then it circles in that one for a couple of months until it gets to the full energy. But they are all connected and they start with the small one. And that's what it reminds me of. Like you got this one hole and it's got a little box. And they're like, wow, this is kind of cool, but it's not quite uh, giving us what we need. So let's build another hole with a little slightly bigger box, you know, and <laughs> yeah. like, well, that's, that's, yeah. this is actually working out. Well, let's look, let's build another one with a, an even bigger box, Yeah, you yeah. know, and this box will be big enough where you can walk around in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's the King's Chamber. Yeah. 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 It could be. I, I, I like that analogy. That's apt. Yeah, it's like there uh, is. A, it, that's why I was. That's why I was saying it's like not a copy, but is there some <laughs> sort of? Is there a development? Right. Well, that thing blew up at some point. Yeah. So let's hope that doesn't. That hopefully the analogy doesn't carry over to the Large Hadron Collider because. <laughs> right. Aren't they? Aren't they planning to try and make a black hole when yeah, the eclipse they're, happens? They're going to turn it like, on and make a black hole. <laughs> yeah. During the eclipse. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> well, it takes it takes like months to. To get it He's up to speed, up. so yeah, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. yeah. Then, okay. So I don't, they won't uh, be making black holes. We don't know right if that. they've been running it for months or not. It takes them. It takes them six months to cool it down. They've known to even turn it on six months away. Oh, wow. Yeah, they've known about <laughs> they've known about the eclipse for a long time. They have. Yeah, they could be no, cooling yeah. it down already as we speak. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they have to cool those magnets for a long time before it starts to work. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this this is all. So what else did we see walking around Giza? We noticed that uh, uh, some of the some of the huge blocks at the base of the Great Pyramid are pretty much there's just stacks of fossils with sand, but it's been lithified. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw this this stuff when we were out in the Fayum. They, they the, the drivers actually stopped, and we all got out, and we're just standing on this sandy area that was like you could just pick, you run your hands through the material, and it's nothing but shells and sand. Fossils from like a like what were they Eocene 30 to 40, 30, 40 million year old you know seabed and there are blocks in the Great Pyramid that are basically made of compacted lithified versions of this stuff yeah. that we were picking up yeah limestone extreme like all it is mm. is fossils not a good building material mm. not at all but they made blocks out of it core and masonry yeah yeah it's core masonry yeah. And you can see all around the area, uh, around the pyramid, there are sections of the bedrock that are also that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just nothing but fossils, but it's all been glued together, basically lithified. And I found Mm -hmm. that to be really interesting. Like they were, they're clearly pulling material from all around the area. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look up at the pyramid. If you stand there and just look at it for a while, you see there's all this different, it's not just, you know, they say, well, the core limestone masonry, well... Some of it was probably taken from those massive limestone quarries that Yusuf took us to last time we were there. Mm-hmm. These gigantic holes over in over in Cairo, like across the river. Yeah, mm. across the river, there are these enormous. They're not they're not like normal quarries where you're digging down. Somebody dug into the cliff walls. In, yeah, they were fo- they were following sure. layers, following that's, layers, and leaving the these gigantic caverns. There's another thing I noticed. Speaking of layers, like in the. Um, tunnel under the Great Pyramid, I mean, under the uh, Step Pyramid, they they basically tunnel, ta- tunnel down through all this crappy limestone, and then they hit this, you know, like, eight-foot thick, really solid layer of good Tura, and that's where all the tunnels just, whoosh, yeah, they go up. Let's dig they the tunnels dug, in the hard stuff. They dug a shaft <laughs> all the way down, and then they, they hit that hard layer, and they're like, that's the roof. Yeah. For the tunnels. Right. And the tunnels just right. go everywhere underneath that hard layer. Yeah. And that's where they mm. set the box. It's like, 
the, yeah, that's 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 kind of what I'm thinking. It's like they're they're masters of this stone. They know they know what they're doing. Yeah, and like you can see it in uh, in the Osiris shaft as well. When you get down to the first room, they're following this particular layer of stone when they're cutting that big room. Yeah. And then they go down again, mm. and then they hit another hard layer, and then they cut a big room under Make it. Because it's like it's yeah, a yeah, solid yeah. roof for, for a, you know, you wouldn't want to dig a big open area. In the crappy materials. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they just go down until they hit that hard layer, and then it's like, tunnel's mm. on. Let's go. Mm. Yeah. That was did you guys know? Go ahead. Sorry. Go I was going to say, did you notice the when you walked around the Great Pyramid, did you notice because – now on the, I think it's the southern side where the boat museum used to be. Now it's gone, mm. and you can actually see all the casing stones. Did you notice that that some areas it's just the erosion on some of those casing stones? Yeah, at the bottom. I mean, it looks severe. Like I, I, I'm, I am going to be doing a video about erosion. Uh, the you know the the mortuary temple at the middle pyramid complex, and compared to the other fourth dynasty structures. But I look yeah. at some of the erosion on some of the existing casing stones still on the Great Pyramid. I mean, it's the same kind of thing it's yeah looks pretty severe in places other places not so much but they, they, some of those casing stones look pretty pretty heavily right they also have been plastering them this was pissing yeah. us off that day remember we saw all those yeah. casing stones where somebody has come along and tried yeah. to repair them yeah to fix the erosion yeah in modern times so they've like yeah. plastered it to make to give it this you know put mortar all they put it's mortar and it filled terrible. the holes and it just it just looks like crap it's horrible yeah yeah well that's the that's that's probably why they stopped Waziri. Like that was the other thing I was looking forward to seeing when we, bef just before the tour, right? Waziri had dug that hole at the third pyramid at Menkara. Yeah, and was talking about rebuilding it, and I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah, clearing the base and and documenting it, good. Rebuilding it, bad, because right. I know how you guys are going to rebuild he got, it. He got fired. He got fired. Mo told me, man. Yeah, yeah. Mo literally that when we got there and and we figured out, oh, he got pulled up, and they're like, oh, there's this. There's a committee that's they, – they stopped his work and they there's a committee that's headed by Zahi Was that's going to figure out what they're going to do about it. <laughs> yeah. And Mo told me at the start of that too, he said he's going to he's gonna get fired. Yeah. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, yeah, he's he's gone. And a month later, sure enough. Yep. He's gone. Fired. That's crazy. Yeah. Head of the Antiquities Department fired over saying some shit on Facebook about <laughs> our pyramid. <laughs> Digging a hole. You dug a hole in the wrong spot, son. Yep. And they filled that shit they in. Filled like, the it was hole really in. annoying. Yeah. Yeah. We turned up and I'm like, damn it. And you see all this fresh dirt there. I like, really yep. wanted to because if you if you guys haven't seen that, go out and find it. And you can look at like the excavations at Mankara Pyramid. Uh, I think the video's on Facebook. But they dug down. I mean, where the where the entrance is, it, it's another two and a half courses of stone beneath yeah. the ground. And, and I'm sure there's a flat granite blocks. I'm sure there's a flat granite platform there too. Like on well, the other side. I, yeah, I'm super interested in the bedrock there. Like, yeah. what's the bedrock preparation? Because you look at the other pyramids, there's these giant foundation tiles beneath them. Yeah. Oh, there could be a, a whole basalt floor and all that stuff yeah. under there too. Yep. Yeah. Who knows? We just it blows my mind that 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 we've never cleared the bases of some of these monuments. Like these are the I I don't know if you get any more famous than the pyramids of Giza. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But we just have never cleared the base of the Menkara pyramid. We've never cleared the base of. The Red Pyramid, I mean, the Bent Pyramid still got rubble around it. You, more or less, I think they've exposed the corner the corner points, at least, on yeah. that one. But, you know, the Red Pyramid, the Mankara Pyramid, you just, you can't get to, you can't see the base of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, the, the casing stones just, just go down into the sand and that's it. That's it. I would say one mm -hmm. other thing about the erosion on the casing stones, it it's very clear when you when you look at all the different structures on the plateau, the stones at the bottom are extremely eroded like laterally they've got all these yeah. deep fissures in them laterally and i i'm i'm definitely on the wind and sand erosion yeah. for you know yep. in, in that camp like this makes perfect sense you can see like it there'd be these little eddies you know of sand just yeah just grinding yep. away at that stone on the bottom so of course it makes sense that the builders would put or at least it, they don't have to be the pyramid builders. They could be repairers or whatever. But put mm. granite on the first two courses. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? The, the middle you're gonna pyramid put, you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. You put granite on the first two courses of the, of the pyramid because that is the, that's going to hold up the most to that sand that's going to be in that first 10 yeah, feet yeah. of the pyramid yeah. base. And then once you get up higher, you can move to a slightly softer stone sure. like Tura. 
and you're not going to deal with nearly as much erosion there. So it's a, it's yeah. a you know. <clears throat> yeah, I yeah, wonder if they, if they did a, you know, it'd be interesting if they did, they did a site study and they were like, well, the, where, where the Great Pyramid is, it's not going to have such a big problem. The middle pyramid, it's going to have a problem at the base. We'll put one or two courses of granite, and then the and then Minkara, it's gonna it's gonna have a lot of wind blown sand coming off that hill towards it. Yeah. So it needs seventeen or eighteen cases of granite. You know. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I mean it's a tremendous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Granite either way. <laughs> With a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that middle pyramid, man, I, I, because there's that one spot near the on the north side where there's a granite block that's in the superstructure that's up at like. Eight nine courses high. Did you guys see that no. on the middle so pyramid? Walk, yeah, in the middle pyramid. Oh, okay, yeah, there's a, a like to the le- if you're looking at the entrances to the left up, but up high, mm. there's a couple granite blocks that are in there. Like there's something else there. Ah. I don't think that's an indication that that it was cased that high, but there's some some feature that was made from granite up there, mm. and it's to the left of the entrance, not the main entrance. It's not like there if if there ever was really an entrance to it there because the main entrance you go into uh, is through the bedrock out the front. Yeah. And then I just got to looking at the p- pictures of the pyramid and from all these different angles, and I just keep noticing that that at some point, it's the first five or six courses. It it like the quality of that pyramid shifts. Like it's the the bottom five or six courses, maybe more, se- seven or something like this. It, but you can see a noticeable shift in yeah. in quality, and it's just like. I don't know if it, it almost looks like two different periods of building to me. Where, it where is it? Was there actually, was this like a platform at some point? Yeah. Maybe it was encased in granite up to that point. It may have been a step on top of it. Yeah. A step, yeah. It could have been something. But it, or, and then they and pyramidized then later it. Later on, it was built into a true pyramid encased with the Tour of Limestone. I don't know. But it doesn't surprise me at all. You, it wouldn't. You just. You, because you go and look at the higher levels of the core masonry of that thing, and it's quite poor. Like it's 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 a noticeably lower quality of core masonry than what the Great Pyramid is. But the bottom courses are way better. Like there's yeah. there's megalithic blocks in there that are a couple hundred tons or 150 tons or so in those bottom courses. But that's not the case. The higher up you go, it just shifts. There's a dramatic and obvious shift mm. in uh, like architecture. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's 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 worth more investigation, but I'm just I keep looking at it and going, this this is like a this thing is something else. Like it just it I'm not sure it was always a pyramid. Yeah. Well that made me think I, of the of the satellite pyramids. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah. the, I kinda got that idea about yeah. all of them. <laughs> yeah. The the where like I was saying, there's one that looks pyramidy and then the middle one looks a lot more like a step like a step pyramid or a or a ziggurat. Like right. a tall ziggurat, right? It's got a got a big, nice base platform, and then the whole middle of the pyramid has a very vertical aspect right. to it. Like what's the what's the one? Like that a we tower go to? with a very slight, slight. Yeah, yeah my, my doom. doom. Yeah, that that central structure. I mean, come on, they built that first. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. And then it was the, pyramided. The yeah. came later. Yeah, it yeah. was pyramided. Yeah. So I want. It's like okay, I could give Khufu credit for turning the Great Pyramid into a pyramid. Yeah. Because it was something else first. Yeah. Yeah. It was some other structure that may have been highly degraded, like starting to fall apart. And he's like, nah, you know. Yeah. This is yeah. why maybe some of these kings, like <laughs> some of these kings did this for multiple sites. They weren't burial sites. Maybe they did want themselves buried in them at some point. But like, why would you, why would you build multiple if you, you know, yeah, you like only need one for yourself. Three of them. Yeah. You know. Are they, did, did they, did they uh, decide to start making these structures to protect these much older uh, original structures, these core structures, whatever they were, which is what, you know, this goes back to the whole primordial mound thing. It's like something was going yeah. on. Yeah, is and it? that that makes sense too. If these old kingdom kings were, you know, they were not like Ramses. Uh, right. They and they were closer, like, much more connected to... Yeah, so they... they they honored these right. structures. They repaired them. They cased them over to keep them from falling apart more than they have. But they didn't claim them by writing their names all over them. Right. Right. But some of the that, stones may have mason marks that say, yeah, we're, we're the gang of Khufu. You know? <laughs> right. Or, yeah. Well, even then, I'm not 
I'm not that that particular glyph I've got issues. Yeah, with, yeah, but yeah. That particular one. There are I agree. marks on other ones, and but there and to be fair, there are there is a, a, a they found one of the exterior blocks at at the Red Pyramid supposedly has Sneferu's name on it. Mm. Similar thing. Yeah, supposedly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and but that that whole that concept of of, of revering and protecting and 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 preserving almost that that older architecture that's not unique to that area i mean this is a super common theme you see in south america and peru same yeah, thing right where, exactly where you have you can see the obviously much older layers of architecture that are then built on and protected and almost lovingly kind of in encompassed by yeah the later megalithic builders and then the inca would would kind of do the same thing they the inca came along and all right well we're also going to put our touches on this and build on top of it and encircle it. It was almost this, there's this concept of this encircling and protection. Yeah. Circular protection of, of, of the older work. Yeah. So. And there's even, and, and in Egypt, there's even later versions of that where they were mud bricking circular, you know, <laughs> yeah. encasing all that stuff in a mud brick wall. Yeah. Mud brick. I, yeah. I love this too, because no. you've, you've got the superstructure, obviously it's sticking out of the mud brick. You can mm -hmm. see these megalithic limestone blocks, whatever they are, just corners of them or whatever yeah. sticking out. They use this, this method of making these mud bricks. It's like, yeah, it's fine because they're going to put a roof on it. They're going to put this Tura limestone roof over the mud brick, and it's going to preserve it. It's going to preserve that inner structure. And even though the limestone was quarried away, the mud brick is melting away. Like, you're still only seeing, like, a little corner. Yeah. It's, yeah. Whatever is in there is Doing still, still protected, protected yeah. thousands of years later. So the mud brick, I, yeah. I think, I, you know... It doesn't. It's not necessarily like a a lack of the ability because they still may have cased it and finally worked that casing stone. Yeah, right. and they could have built the casing stone to high degrees of accuracy, but yeah. it's like, yeah, this this core masonry can be whatever. And there's it's it's like yeah, there it depends on economics. There could be giant mud brick pockets in. Giza pyramid. We just don't know. Yeah, you know, with yeah, the, all know. like the entire the entirety of the of <laughs> the middle pyramid is is basically unknown. That's what Scan Pyramids <laughs> Project yeah. found the mud brick mud brick section yeah. <laughs> pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Thought it was the throne of Khufu. Moved differently through mud brick. I, I knew the sure. I knew the throne yeah. of Khufu was going to be in there. But oh well. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Another break. Yep. Yeah. 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 We'll be right back. Take a look. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, brothers of the Serpent Podcast, joined by Ben from Uncharted X. And we have half our pyramids tied behind our backs just to make it square. We've been talking <laughs> about Giza. We had we did so many things on this trip. I mean, six weeks, we did a lot of stuff. Um, but one of the things we wanted to get to is our explorations in the Fayum uh, in between the tours. So we had know, like 10 days, something like that. In between, so the first three or four we spent in Cairo, right next to the plateau, and that's when Kyle and I went on our walkabout on Giza, and um, found many things. We took a bunch of videos there. We'll be publishing those soon. Um, but then we went out to the Fayum and did some trekking around in the desert. And the first the first day, uh, well, the first day in the desert, we we went out and went to what was the place called, Kasser El. Kasser el Saga. Yeah. So there is I a think. a what looks like an old kingdom style. It looks like similar to the Valley Temple, much smaller, but similar to the Valley Temple in construction. Um it was a sand, was that sandstone? What was that, I think it was either limestone or I don't know if it was sandstone. It might have been might have been limestone. It could be one of the yeah. two. Uh but similar in style of construction, just out I mean, out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, out really in the is. desert. It's just now you know if you look at the historical records and read some of the of the 
published work on it, they suggest that this used to sit near where the flooding would come to. So there's this large sort of like, flat area, and it would make a big lake during uh, flooding seasons where the flooding was particularly well, still high. The Fayum, like the, the Fayum itself is like this, it's this huge basin. And it yeah. kind of, if you're looking at a map of the Nile, it looks like almost like a grape leaf branching yeah. off of the Nile. Yeah. That's the way I yeah. always think of it when I see it on a map. And, and you can tell because it's green. So it's like, it's it's an oasis. Big depression, yeah. Huge it, depression it, yeah. that would that, that the Nile flooding would sort of branch off the Nile and fill this whole valley. And uh, it's it's quite beautiful down there. But then on, on the ridges around it, that's kind of where we went. Yeah. Driving out on the out into, into the, the mountains. Desert. It just changes yeah. from green to desert. You go, you climb up these mountains, <laughs> and you're just in the high desert. And yeah. you know, down below, you can see there's there's lakes down there. It's a beautiful area. But yeah, that's the basic geography. Yeah, yeah, and it's an ancient, ancient landscape. I mean, it's you know, this full of fossils, and like you know, this is where the it's similar era. To, I mean, the Western Desert's where the Valley of the Whales are. Yeah. You know, you have 30, 40 million year old skeletons poking up out of the sands and you can just tell this is a an ancient place. And then, yeah, you drive around these hills, go around the top of the lake there. I don't know if it's Lake Morris. It's one of the other lakes, I think. And then, yeah, all of a sudden you just find yourself at this at this massive structure that's sitting out in the middle of the desert. Yeah, and, and you uh, feel it looks, like... It's very similar to the Valley Temple, like megalithic, polygonal, masonry. Yeah. You've got chambers been behind the walls. It shows... It has bullnosed chapels. It has all these similar features. It's got architecture like the Valley Temple. It's got bullnoses and curvatures and cornice blocks like both Old Kingdom and, you know, the boxes on Elephantine Island. Um, it's There's flint everywhere around the place. It's, you know, even as we walked we walked out and went around in the surrounding neighborhood, there's, there's clearly evidence for occupation. Like there's, you know, there's tunnels and burials and stuff everywhere out there. Yeah, so prehistoric occupation. Yeah, I mean... Prehistoric yeah. occupation, yeah. yeah. Pottery flying all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Really interesting uh, little spot. I hadn't heard much about it, but I, I you know, I was, I was super happy we got out there because I I went out there last year. I, I went out there when I was there with Yusuf and, and Mo for a few days, and so I've been wanting to get you guys out there, and, and uh, we took a few people out there, and... This is was one of those things you can go and see. There's a ton of these sites that are kind of off the beaten track you can go out and take a look at. And this was, yeah, I don't know what to make of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's super interesting. Though. I mean, it just doesn't fit the story. It's there's even even around it. There seems to be evidence for like an older structure that's been destroyed. Like there's yeah. blocks that are super heavily eroded, but they're clearly cut blocks. Yeah, that are laying around outside it. So maybe you know this is a, only a portion of what was here originally, or yeah, it's a rebuilding of what was here originally. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it kind of. I mean, in that, just thinking of it in in those terms, that it might have been a piece of something rebuilt. Mm. That makes a little bit more sense. Just that thing by itself. Yeah, I'm like, I can understand the urge to say this is a shrine. Yeah, or this is a <laughs> temple. Yeah, because it doesn't. It's, yeah. it's so weird. Like, what function could it possibly have? Again, no writing. It's not covered in hieroglyphs. Yeah. No. Uh, so that was unusual. There were statues in it. There was, I think yeah. there's a remnant of a statue, like a calcite statue. Yeah, there, there's seven one alcoves the... when you go inside. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it, it it just made me think of a shrine, you know, like this is some yeah. kind of shrine. But, but again... But they also connect it to the removal of basalt from That's the... what I'm saying. It's, it's on the road to a quarry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the road, road itself yeah. is, is yeah. another thing entirely. I mean, <laughs> we're driving along, and I'm like, "What is this rail old railroad track?" <laughs> no, nope. looking out the, the window, I'm like, road. "That's." Uh, we're driving past all this stuff. I'm like, "This is, that's a uh, petrified wood." It's petrified wood. Yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah, corduroy it's road made out of it's, petrified wood. Yeah, it's corduroy the, road made from <laughs> petrified wood and basalt. <laughs> yeah, and basalt. So there's literally like this is describe it to people. You're out in the desert. This is the Western Desert, and you just shooting out in these dunes and it's this crazy desert landscape and then for a portion of this we just we're driving towards these mountains in the distance and you just notice that you're right next to this i mean it's fairly narrow what is yeah. it like three four meters maybe like a railroad Not, track i mean like a railroad track yeah like the berm, four cubits it, it's wider yeah it's 
Royal cubit. Royal cubit, right? <laughs> two horses royal wide. Cubit or, you know, it's two horses royal wide. Royal cubit. <laughs> African cubit. Royal cubit. Yeah. But it's straight as an arrow too. It mm-hmm. runs straight from and it goes directly to what is turns out is the basalt quarry, which yeah. is I've always wanted to get to because I've talked about it in videos. I said I know they say there's a quarry out uh, in the Western Desert at the at the the far edge of the Fayum region out in the desert. And this road apparently runs straight back to the lake and it, it goes for miles. And it's and it I think it is acknowledged as one of the world's oldest roads, like four or five thousand year old road. And it's who knows how old it is, it's tough to date the stone, but it's it's they made the damn thing from, yeah, petrified wood. Yeah. And basalt from the quarry. And it's just full and then there's nearby is like a petrified forest that we went and took a walk through too, where you see the remnants of whole trees and skeletons and you know, uh fossils from from ancient whales and crocodiles and things like this. But uh, really interesting why they did that. And then, you know, we you keep driving and following it and we, we got to kind of the mountains and it's all these these mountains that are covered in basalt. Like, and you just see these just basalt boulders and rubble everywhere. And you just, you just, we, you got to keep climbing up them and walking up them through these little valleys and stuff. And then you just look, you're faced with these series of these, Tall hills, and they're still quarrying basalt from it. I mean, you, we, we could hear across on the other side of the mountains, they were, yep. you know, duk, 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 duk. They're, yep. they're, they're hammering away and, and pulling basalt out of there. But this is also an ancient quarry uh, where at the very top layer, you know, you, you, it's like all this crumbling basalt. None of it looks to be big enough pieces that you'd think could be used for some of the sizes of the basalt blocks we've seen uh, on sites. Like it, Abu Sir, you've got giant big basalt blocks. You've got statues made from basalt that are really large. Um, you know, there's other slabs of basalt, and you're done. You're looking around, and you're like, this. None of this seems to fit that bill. But if you look right at the top of the hill, the crest of the hill, the top, whatever, seven or eight meters, <clears throat> it's solid basalt. And apparently, that's where they were quarrying a lot of this basalt from. Yeah, uh, we couldn't. We didn't quite get up there because it's sketchy and. Uh, yeah. It's quite a climb, but yeah, it's I, I, one of these days we will. I think. Yeah, we're gonna have to climb up there. We didn't know for sure when we were out there if we yeah, were if in we the were right, in right place. Spot. Yeah. Um, but later we were looking at the at some of the maps and the papers, and like, yeah, if we're pretty close to the right spot, and if 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 they're correct, then up at the top there, there were like four different areas where they were they've marked as ancient quarries. And, and supposedly the saw cuts and stuff up there too. Yeah, like so the same sort of stuff you see on the, <clears throat> exactly. the other blocks. That was what we wanted to get up out there to see. Like, are there the same cut marks, witness marks, and stuff on these in these quarries as what we see on site? I was just trying to imagine that road. <laughs> like, they literally took this. Like, oh, was, there's a log laying over there. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> stone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go find I mean, some they more, just John. they just laid them all down <laughs> one after the other. You try to imagine driving on a road made of logs, <laughs> but these are stone logs, and yeah. they're narrow. And I, it's just, I don't know. And then underneath well, the underneath the the stone logs was some kind of calcite or some other limestone material they were using. It's like, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. It's just trying to imagine. Okay, we're gonna. Climb up this mountain, cut this huge basalt block off of it, and then you're going to drag it down this road made of petrified wood, petrified trees. <laughs> I just, it's crazy. Yeah, it's odd. I mean, we don't know what that finished surface of that road might have looked like, whether no. this is still part of its foundation or not. I mean, if there was something on top of that, we'd, I mean, surely they gone. could have flattened it just like they flattened granite. Yeah. So it might, it might have been nice. It was just amazing to Who see knows? that they actually used, you know, the, the logs as though they were logs and laid them down <laughs> one after the <laughs> other. Yeah. You could Stone see logs. the round ends sticking out with the wood grain in it yeah. on the side yeah. of the road. Just it was Pretty amazing. Yeah, it was Yeah, yeah it's it's very cool. Yeah, and then it, we found the petrified forest and went for a walk through that. And then I think we also hit the Valley of the Whales when we were out there. But the foam's such an interesting place. And then there was quite a bit of, yeah, Dunan. As you yeah. were saying, we did, did <laughs> we some doing and doing. Did some dunin. Yeah, this is all in four wheel drives, you know. So we did spend uh, a few hours playing in the dunes with the boys, <laughs> driving us around yeah. and having all the kids and get on children and women screaming. You get on the peak of this dune <laughs> like this, you know, it's like way it's up there, and it's just this corner, and the 
Jeeps are driving on that corner. You're looking down. It's like, oh my God, that yeah. is so. And then the, you see, I'm we're in the back, my Jeep with my family in it. <laughs> Laura and the kids, <laughs> they're in the back. I'm in the passenger seat. And you see the Jeeps in the front just go off the edge <laughs> yeah. and they start Sliding. drifting down the side and just, and Laura starts screaming. <laughs> As soon as she sees it, she's like, no, no. <laughs> and away we go. We go down the edge, too. And, oh, my God. That was. It was epic. Yeah. And, and hilarious. The buff. Yeah. It was, the window's yeah. halfway down. It comes off the tower and just washes you. <laughs> yep. Just yeah. There's no, there's no AC. So you're like, you know, you start getting hot. So you roll the windows down and then the wind picks up the and just <laughs> Ben and I get <laughs> coated. Sand. And sand, yeah. yeah. We're like, yeah. Well, we were in the we were in the silent gym. We just sat there. It was stuff. hilarious. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I we were totally it. quiet. I'm telling you this. Yep. I knew it. Uh, <laughs> they were in front of us, and and Laura and the kids are just screaming their heads off every time we do something crazy. And then at some point, we're driving along, and I I just tell Laura, I'm like, I bet that Jeep up there is completely quiet. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, we get to the stop point. The Egyptian guys were awesome. I, we we stop at this really cool place where there's an overhang. There's this big protrusion of bedrock and we're in the sand and there's this big overhang in the shade. And they just lay out all these carpets and start grilling and se- I mean set up tables and yeah, mm. pillows and everything and just serve this beautiful amazing lunch under this overhang mm-hmm. of this cliff. Uh, yeah, it was it was quite something. <laughs> yeah. Play, and then they busted out some instruments, started jamming for oh, us. Yeah. And it was yep. just, it was yeah. so cool, just being way out there in the middle of nowhere. Anyways, cool. I confirmed it was true. I went over there and I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> "How was the ride, you guys?" Oh, it was great. <laughs> Bet it was quiet in your jeep. Oh, yeah. We yeah. could hear y'all screaming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I literally could hear you guys screaming from our jeep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we could hear the screams. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, we were the only noise in our Jeep was us laughing because we could hear y'all's Jeep. <laughs> and we start laughing. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, it was hilarious. <laughs> our driver, like, <clears throat> whenever he would, like, <clears throat> a lot of times you're trying to climb some dune and, you know, just didn't, didn't, work didn't out. get enough power or whatever. Yeah. And there was a couple of vehicles that had to stop and back down. And we're following pretty close behind one of them in the. Yeah, he was and multiple there, times, around. yeah, our driver would start yelling in Arabic. <laughs> I'm sure he was cursing the, the guy in front of us. Yeah. And I would just copy yeah. whatever he was saying. <laughs> I started, <laughs> and he would laugh. <laughs> yeah, our because yeah. yeah, you guys were following us. Yeah. And sometimes our driver yeah. was a little slow. And then your driver would have, your, your driver would have to back up and try it again. Change direction or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. We'd lose Come momentum. Out, and then, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, these guys know the desert. That's an amazing thing about it. You, they just go out and just they just kind of know what direction they're going and where to yeah. head and where they're land. I mean, they've been doing it for decades probably. And then yeah, you, but you just feel like you, you're literally out in the desert. You can't see anything. Yeah, it's just desert. Yeah, and we're just all on ass through the <laughs> desert. It is, it is. It is. It is an experience. Yeah, yeah. Egypt's got a lot to offer. It's a straight. It's like a, it's an incredibly rich country in terms of just. Experience. Different experiences yeah. and different places that you can go and do. Like it, it's really interesting. You just people don't think about those aspects. And then you got the Red Sea, which is yeah, beautiful. You wouldn't, ex- you know, these beaches and coral and some of the nicest water you'll ever see. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, water. it's pretty amazing. We went from like getting doused with sand, like coursing on dunes and in, in jeeps, and three days later we're seventy feet down in beautiful, <laughs> clear, crystal clear water, looking <laughs> at water, coral yeah. and fish. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And toilets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a good trip. There was a shipwreck with some toilets. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there was. Yeah, I got a great picture of you. Uh, well, and, I just I mean, turn around and look down there all the way at the bottom, and Russ is sitting on this ancient <laughs> toilet. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like straddling this toilet, just looking around like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Somebody take my picture. Yeah. <laughs> Blowing bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's good. Great comedic moment. I <laughs> yeah. love it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at that photo the other day. It was funny. <laughs> and Ben, Ben, afterwards, we were sharing photos, and then he sends us a picture from like 10 years ago where he was sitting on a toilet. Uh, yeah, the bottom of the ocean, yeah, yeah, I have a picture of doing the exact same. When you see a toilet underwater, you go sit on it. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I sat on a toilet just like that. That's what I was laughing about. Underwater, I think I was laughing. Like, yeah. 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 I saw you sitting on it. I'm like, uh huh. Uh huh. You did the right thing. Yeah. 
<laughs> ben is a fish, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you guys know this, but I, can, <laughs> I turn around and he's doing flips. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you did yeah. amazing. No, no, no. You, I mean, for you, I was so impressed with your don't. Honestly, like you were, you were worrying about Laura. Cause Laura came with us too on the dives. Yeah. You were, you were, you were driving this super complicated iPhone yep. super case <laughs> dive computer thing, taking pictures. And you had no problem managing your own dive, and this is kind of kind of was your guys' first real yeah. dive, like real open ocean, you know, proper dive out, yeah. and you just handled it like it was nothing. I, that was yeah, super impressive. I appreciate impressive. it, man. Yeah. 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 yeah I, had, awesome. I did have some uh, ear problems. I was like, oh, we all did. Trying to. Yeah. <clears throat> just the congestion. From we all yeah. had, yeah, some congestion and some. We were questioning whether we were even going to be, able, Ben and I were just like, well, let's do a, let's do a shore dive the first time in like, We'll get down see and see, we can we can we even equalize yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Because for me, I mean, I hadn't been diving in more than 10 years. So, yeah. But I did a lot, awful lot of it back in the day, and I, I love the water. I'm always I'm comfortable. I mean, I think the most it's, important thing is as long as you're comfortable and you don't panic and you're, mm-hmm. you're you know, you can handle yourself in the water, as long as you under, remember the fundamentals of diving and you click right back into it, which is what happened. I was fine. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was a bit worried because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, diving while you're congested, you got sinus problems is never a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, but yeah, it was fine. Yeah. You um, were funny too, though. You'd get down there, there'd be some fish or whatever. You just get, you had your GoPro. <laughs> like you're right <laughs> He's just like yeah. the fish is just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's got this little thing. He's poking stuff. Yep. And he's got a little <laughs> stick, a little, yeah, little metal rod. rod. Yeah, he's yeah. poking shit with it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I saw the footage of you and those little fish were biting your fingers. You would like mm-hmm. you started to play with those bottom feeding fish, and then yep. you had to snap your hand away because yep. they started like, "Oh, we're going to eat your fingers now." Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They definitely yeah, took they some bites out of me. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was fun. But yeah, so then we yeah we came back and did it all again for the second tour, and it was um just as epic. I. I you know, it, what was interesting, actually, one of the aspects of doing two tours, and, you know, we talked about, we started off by talking about some of the new work that's happening on some of these sites. You know, Abu has been cleared out. Even Abu Ghraib nearby has, you know, they've exposed some structure in the sand out the back of that. Yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed, I don't know if you, you guys noticed it, but, uh, and this was like, hmm, I wonder how often this sort of thing happens. Because so the first time we went to Abu Sea, we, 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 or well, Abu Ghraib, which is the sun temple, the, the, oh, yes. the obelisk base. There was an archaeologist that worked there, and they had yeah. they had excavated out the front of in the in like the the courtyard, the big area in front of this obelisk base and the hotep, and they cleared it all out and they've exposed the bedrock. And there was some mud brick stuff, and there was all these features. They they dug it right down to the bedrock, and he, he's he's you know he's walking around barefoot. <laughs> We're all hanging around waiting for them to leave so we can do our thing. Yeah, and and he's taken all these pictures of it and stuff. We see him documenting it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I know they've been working on that site for the last couple of years. But then we came back a month later and it's all buried again. Buried, yeah. yeah. They buried it back again. They, they literally took it up, they, they dug it up, they they documented it, and then they reburied it, which, you know, I mean, in principle, I'm fine with, but it's just like, where does that data go? <laughs> I'd yeah. love to know, like, who, is this going to be in a paper or is it just something happens in academia or does it come out 10 years later? I mean... That's the you know, weird thing about we, yeah. we just never know what, what gets done, and we don't know what's in the archives. I mean, they've got no. Who knows what? That's that's. Well, I mean, that goes back to your point too about like a lot of this stuff was published, you know, like Petrie stuff. He was publishing, but there's so much. Like, did anyone ever excavate these shafts on the Giza Plateau? Uh, it's like that. Where's no, that well, no, data? No. I've tried. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Doing the same thing in the pyramid, right? Obviously, yeah. Mm-hmm. When we went into the Great Pyramid, and we so we went in, we do as do a special permission. We end the tours with this awesome two hours inside the Great Pyramid, go into all the chambers, blah blah blah. And you know, there's <laughs> the first time we went in there is not as much stuff. And the second time we go in there, I mean, the for for, for stars, the Queen's Chamber is just full like a workshop in there. There's like yeah. a, a drop saw, a miter saw. They're doing <laughs> woodworking. They got like I don't. There's cables going everywhere, and then. You know the the first uh, the first time we saw it, there's there was obviously an electricity cable going up into the chambers above the, the king's gallery. chamber, the relieving yeah. chamber. So the yeah. access to that's at the top left corner of the grand gallery. You know, eighteen twenty feet up in the 
in the air and there's a cable going in there. And then the second time we go in there, there's actually the ladder for it. Yeah. The ladder to the that's railing. Got, it's, it, and I is... <laughs> asked him, can we get this ladder out and get up in there? He's like, no, 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 you can't do that. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. Like, what are you doing up there that there's a cable? I know there's – you. The I'm thing, sure they're drilling for this new void is what I suspect's going on. Yeah. Who knows? The thing that's really funny to me about that ladder is like in, in Chris Dunn's book, uh, The Giza Power Plant, He when he goes through the history of discovery, and yeah. I think it's Davidson or somebody, Yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, there's this there's this tunnel up in the top of the Grand Gallery. we got to get up there. And they they tie two ladders together with <laughs> rope. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Russ are laughing. We're like, dude, that is the... You're at the top the of the Grand Gallery. It's so yeah. sketchy. Yeah. You're going to tie two ladders together and to get up in this hole. Then we get, when we <laughs> get there, doing? <laughs> and the, they have two ladders tied together with rope. Yeah. I rope. was like, I know what that is for. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still the same methods. Yeah. Yep. And it's just strapped to the railing that's in yeah. there that, you, that helps people walk up and down the Grand Gallery. I'm like, God damn it. Can we just untie this and yeah. pop it up and go and see? Uh, you know. No. no. But. So I, but yeah, there's I, power cable going up there. They yeah, the ladder. They're, they're there doing something. While. Yep. Yeah, that, that thing's been run up there for a year or so. I mean, yeah, they've definitely been in there. I mean, I they closed that pyramid, as I've told people, like last year in the summer for three months. I mean, mm. so they, you know, I had heard various things about, you know, obviously they found that first chamber, the new chamber that's underneath mm -hmm. the chevrons at the main entrance. And I, somebody told me, that, oh, they knocked a hole in that and i mean they they, they drilled they put an endoscope in there and 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 took a look and then somebody told me that oh they they'd cut a, a hole in it to actually go in there although russ you and i did actually manage to get up there on this yeah last trip and take a good look at it um in big the dark drills up there in the dark in fact. to be fair in the dark yeah yeah we you're not supposed to get, they so told us so not to stupid. use lights yeah yeah we the, you can't go up there these days yeah um I used you used to be able to like there's literally a built like the way you get to the into the regular pyramid and just the main entrance now the the Mamun's hole. hole yeah they built a staircase and it's like you, you can just walk up there they've also that there's also an existing kind of staircase that they built yeah up to the main entrance but there's a gate and they won't let anyone up there now but back in like 2016 you you could just go up there like you could just walk up there and take a look yeah but they've I mean at some point they're like <clears throat> now this is all off limits you can't do it anymore. But of course, you know we're there for two hours. It's it's night time because yep. we're doing our private entry, and we just hey, can we go up there and like okay, make it quick, no lights. Yeah. Because otherwise, the cops out on the plateau get all excited when they see lights. You know. Yeah. Up, uh, up on the, up the pyramid. pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody's trying to climb the pyramid. Yeah. And uh, I really wanted to get up there because I knew there was, and I'd seen it before. There's a there's a big granite block with these massive tube drills. Yeah. They go uh, all really the way through, like deep. Yeah. Deep, long yeah. tube drills that have really, really clear strikes. One split, like the typical yep. quarrying where they've cut the, it's split along the axis of the tube drill, but then two more behind it. Yeah. That are full of sand and shit, but they're obviously there. Uh, and it's part of some mechanism that must have been up on that main entrance. But yeah, it's just, there's all these little these little hidden features on that thing and they're doing stuff. I mean, I, we didn't see any holes to get into that other chamber, but I, like I said, they closed the pyramid for three months and God only knows what they were doing in there. I mean, you know, cleaning. Yeah. But I suspect, you know, that they I just I just wish there was a bit more transparency about about what is actually happening because you know, I I know I'm sure some of those guys that are working on it feel like they own it and it's their information, it's their you know, yeah. their monument. But it it's like there's a lot of interested people that want to know what's happening in there and there's certainly a long history of things happening in there that nobody knows about. Right. And then, you know, like you've said and Yusuf says, like the, the ministry controls the release of whatever is discovered. Yep. So oh, you take Gantenbrink, for example. I mean, yeah. Like he well, wrote yeah. that whole report on all the stuff that he found. They canned it for so long. He yep. eventually just releases the information on his website. Yeah. Yeah. Louis They've Decoy never released the same it. thing. Yeah. Yeah, with the with the labyrinth. I mean, they yep. can't yeah. his report on the Candace labyrinth too, so and then you know whatever. Website. Five yeah. or six years later, he publishes it and goes stuff it. Yeah, I'm gonna try and put the data out there. But who? Yeah, who knows how much stuff's happened? I mean, I've dug into it a bit in the past. There's there's you know acoustic engineer reports of stuff that happened during the shore expedition in the late '90s where they were trying to do acoustic experiments in the pyramid. It's you know that in itself is 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 a not well understood. Uh, series of experiments that happened, but they also report during that time 
having problems setting up their experiments at nighttime because they're hammering away and drilling and excavating up in the relieving chambers. Yeah. And they're seeing guys coming out there with sack, you know, burlap sacks full of limestone chips. Yep. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And what what are you doing? Are doing? Yeah. This is the 90s, you know. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, who knows what they've been doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the the last time we were there in 2022, the um, yep the the robbers tunnel in the alcove in the queen's chamber was open, sort of. Right. And we went in there. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. This time it wasn't locked. It, this time it was completely sealed off and locked. And I I guess the that is the place where the scan pyramids guys put their at least that's no, what I've read. That's where they put their actual the plates, the active yeah. plates. Right, because that's you can put it in there and you can lock it away. It's not going to be disturbed by any tourists, yeah. um, even if they're coming in and out of the Queen's Chamber. Um, so we couldn't get in there this time. But that the Queen's Chamber, half of the chamber was like you know sealed off. You couldn't get to the back half of the chamber. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, from, literally half. Yeah, from the from the uh, the the shaft entrances. The two little shaft entrances from there to the back half of the chamber was completely filled with equipment and materials and boards, and, and it was yeah, sealed off. And tape. Yeah. Caution tape. Caution yeah. tape, yeah. And same thing in the descending passage, right? All the way up. Normally, you can turn left and go up to the, up to to the, the top, top of yeah. the descending it's passage. Full of and stuff. It's full of stuff. Yeah. So there's lots going on. I mean, I know they're, they closed the middle pyramid for, I think they'd run and scan. I mean, I don't know if they're doing that or not. <laughs> scan pyramid um, stuff. Scan pyramid stuff, although they, I think they're also doing it in the third pyramid. There was, yeah. well, yeah. On the outside. Was, there's definitely stuff happening <laughs> Yeah, there. they had, so they, on the, what is it, the east mm -hmm. wall where the, the uh, other east flat, side, the other yeah, flattened the mortuary, area is. The temple. They had built a yeah. scaffold there. They were running GPR up against that flattened surface, right across yeah. that prism block. Yeah. He had a little <laughs> GPR unit and it's, yeah. He's wafting it back and forth. Going back and forth on the scaffold, pointing it into that wall. I wonder if they've done some scan pyramid stuff down inside and they have seen something yeah. near that face. Well, you remember we went in there, right? And if when you go into the bottom of that, there's that one uh, right at the bottom, there's a, there's a right-hand turn and there's a gate that yeah. leads down to another chamber. And we walked past there and there were some irritated-looking Japanese men uh, <laughs> locked behind that gate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the scan pyramid's team yeah like that was 100 percent scan pyramids guys yeah they're like god these fucking tourists you fucking know? Like, tourists this, yeah this, they're probably like this stream of people all day coming past i'm like what are you doing in there like just go away yeah, yeah. we're busy stop breathing our air you're making yeah. it hot in here yeah, yeah. you're making it hot in here <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yep. i mean it's cool they opened that pyramid up again it was closed since i mean it was been closed for five shit six seven years yeah probably yeah so that was the first time i've been down in there and it's just it is you know you you go down into the bedrock but yep. there's, there's blocks. A granite room. Yeah, and there's a granite room. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that doesn't it have the curved ceiling. I'm yeah, trying to remember. It does. Yes, it's a curved ceiling. Yeah, it has the curved ceiling, same as Lahoon. So yes. Lahoon is yeah. also the big the granite room with a curved ceiling. Yep. And there was another box in there, but it it's now it was the what was the name of the ship? The Deirdre or something? The, the it sunk. It mm. uh Vice Di tried to take it back on the diving ship. Opportunity. Of, it, <laughs> yeah. Diving opportunity. Diving it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Well we there's, you know, a lot of people have been trying to find that thing. Um, oh, no one's found it. No one knows where it is. No, yeah, they, no. they. So it was a ship when I mean, it's fully laden. I have the bill of. Uh, I got it from Matt at Ancient Architects. He's he's kind of he thinks he's going to go. He wants to go and try and find it. I'm like nice, nuts, but <laughs> but he's been tracking it down. Like the he he got he found the bill of lading, like the insurance for nice. it, and it lists like a hundred plus artifacts one of them is the box from that third pyramid <laughs> that, that came out of egypt and the damn thing sunk in the med somewhere oh so God. oh man that box is currently sitting along with a bunch of other probably really cool shit uh on the bottom currently. Of the med somewhere. yeah <laughs> hey. currently who knows right i mean <laughs> down there with all the other obelisks that sank and everything yeah. else that went down <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, isn't there some gold ship that they, I saw something in the news recently about some salvage where they were trying to find this, like apparently billions, literally billions of dollars worth of oh, in yeah. modern era worth of gold yeah. on some treasure ship that came out of Spain or South America or something, mm. just hoarding all the gold and like it sank, like you yep. were too greedy. Yep. <laughs> too much gold. L too much gold. Yeah. Sunk it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of gold. I mean, who knows? I mean, that. 
it always astounds me when you talk about the gold coffin coffin of some of these places. I mean, obviously it's a decorative metal, but they had access to a ton of it because, I mean, it's literally like what a hundred plus kilograms of gold in one of these sarcophagus. Yeah, one of these masters, of the Tutankhamun treasures or something. It's like that's a lot of gold. That was the other interesting thing, uh, or one of the other interesting things when we were on Elephantine Island this time. We went around the backside, oh, and oh, yeah. uh, Yusuf was showing like that. He was like, there was a whole gold sifting operation here oh yeah you could we found gold. yeah and he basically. was like look you can just sort of push your hands through the dust and sort of shake it off and you'll see little tiny gold specks because the the whole island is laden with it it's in the quartz in the granite yeah so they were mining and grinding <laughs> this stuff and then there there's this entire mud brick town and you could see layers and layers and layers of it oh yeah, yeah. off the backside it had been washed away in some flood so it was sort of cut <laughs> That was crazy going back there. I mean, yeah. it's just this huge wall. Yeah. And just, yeah. That's a All midden, the pottery boy. in there. Yeah. I was like, this is midden. <laughs> yeah. Dang. And Carl got real excited. Yeah. Like, uh, and then it's like, let's go. I was like, no. No. <laughs> just yeah. <got> here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, that yeah, was we really should, interesting. The other thing about that, though, the pyramid on the backside with the, there's the, that huge natural hole in the bedrock, in the granite yeah. bedrock. Yeah. And there's this, there's a pyramid back there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big it was originally, but pretty small. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a small pyramid. But you, somebody just cut all the way into the center of it, kind of like they did at Minkara. They were like cutting a yeah uh, a hallway into the center of the pyramid, and in the middle is this giant natural. What are they called? Calks. Yeah, like a caulk, a pothole in the a giant pothole in the granite made by the. Eddie's in the river, hmm. and it's like, wow, yeah. that's that's where they had the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> they found it. <laughs> yeah, we did get into the Sadat Temple down there too, which I've been wanting to get into for a long time. We finally got behind the door from the the guys that that closed it up. This is this really cool, again, ancient granite structure that's beneath the current temple that's yeah. been rebuilt like eight times in different eras. That was and, really cool. Uh, yeah, it was kind of cool getting in. I've been wanting to get into that room for quite some time. Then there's another locked door over nearby that yep. I know that there's something behind there you can't get to. That's yep. Elephantine Island's like this mysterious place. That was cool because that, the you go into that door and it's now underground now, but there's the huge natural boulders mm -hmm. and you could see like the they kind of reconstructed some of the mud brick walls where the people were building shelters and then there's like a carving on the side of one with hieroglyphs. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It was just... Yeah, was that was really interesting. Strange place. place down there. Just shows you, you know, how deeply that stuff has been buried, and this is, yeah, God, it's just, it's unbelievable. I just, <clears throat> I was blown away by that wall of Midden too. I mean, it's just that is yeah. huge. Oh, it's super deep. Yeah, it's it's Elfstein Island's like that's Gobekli mean, Tepe size Midden pile. Yeah, really. I mean, yeah. yeah. How many meters was that, Ben? <laughs> oh, it was a bunch. It was. Yeah, I mean, it was. <laughs> they said. I mean. No, the, the the Gobekli Tepe midden is like fifteen meters deep or something. It was something like that. It yeah, must, yeah. I mean, that's the realm of where this big giant wall of this stuff. I mean, you just anywhere where the ground's been cut, you just see its yeah, pottery yeah. and detritus from civilization just piled up. And and you, if you look at the layers in detail, you can go down. There's like pottery, 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 and then all this black granite. Yep. And then it goes down some more and more pottery and pottery, and then there's there's Tura. a bunch of Tura limestone. It's yeah. Like, yeah, and you, and yeah. where he's excavated the area where the boxes are there's a black granite box there that's been just shattered and quarried and i'm looking at the midden layer i'm like yeah yep. they got yeah. down to the top of that box and just started freaking yeah just cutting, cutting into it, it. <laughs> yep. yeah ah! yeah i don't know what was going on there that, that gold was cool i didn't know that that was there either until you started talking about it. Yeah, he was pointing that the the area where the guy's doing current work, like well, it's 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 fenced off, but we saw him the first time we came there. He was there, and they yeah. had workers there, and they were moving stuff, you know, with wheelbarrows and stuff. He yeah. said, Yusuf said, that's where they were doing the the gold stuff. Mm. He said, oh, over yeah, there, the gold processing site. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, processing yeah. site is know. over there where the where the where the archaeology is happening right now. So, mm. right, yeah, <clears throat> still looking yep. for gold. Yes, they are. <laughs> Looking for who knows what. I mean, he's notorious. The, the guy who works on that side is yeah. sort of well-known. The for, angry German. Yeah. The angry German <laughs> for, like, finding stuff, and then he just basically 
builds a concrete pad over it yeah. and then find, puts a door on it and locks it and doesn't let anyone in there. Yeah. Um, and no one really knows what he's doing, but he's been there forever looking for something in particular. Yeah. 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 Really interesting when you tie it to, you know, this was the Ark of the Covenant yep. apparently held here, right, for uh, what, 400 years or something. Yeah. I mean, the first the store. The first time, was it the first tour or the second tour when we were up on deck with Yusuf at night? He he bought a bottle of wine, which he almost never does, and we were sitting we with the, we were sitting up there chilling with him, having some mm. glasses of wine, and he was talking about that guy in that site, and he was, and he was like, "I think he found something," and it was taken from him, and that's why and he's, he's never recovered way. from that particular thing, and so now he <laughs> seals everything up, and he doesn't tell anybody what's going on, and he's kind of very secretive. Like he still is able to dig there, but the first time he found something, they took yeah, it, got taken, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's I, I I have to say that's one of the most impressive reconstructions of a temple though. Yeah. Like the work that they're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. When you go, I mean, you can see all of the archaeological reconstruction, the concrete, the mortar and everything and there's like a piece of a pillar that's just shattered and it's got like a leg and then they've got the concrete reconstruction of the rest of the pillar and they draw the whole guy out on there and then yeah. Yeah. there's like another chunk of stone over there and it's got some a, a little bit of writing and a piece of some shape and then they've drawn the rest of the tool that he's holding in his hand or yeah. whatever. Then you go along and you're looking and like they've they've got these areas where they've collected all these small stones like this big. Each one has like a little piece of writing or something on it and then on the back they've got the, he's got a number yeah. alphanumeric mm. And they're just in this array. I was constantly telling people, don't, don't step on that. Don't yeah, walk don't over mess there. with it's it. Like, <laughs> like the, yeah, yeah. I mean, just it's incredible that the idea of like trying to rebuild this temple the way that they're doing it, and it's it's like I can't imagine. It is good. It's one of the one of the better examples of reconstruction. Yeah, I think. really well. The done. artwork in particular, like that's mm-hmm. very clean. Like how they yeah. redrawn those figures, and it just seems to look right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see the big floor tiles in the temple area, and he's each one is numbered, right? Yeah. And they're like they're all put in place, you know, by the numbers and stuff. It's like it's, it's pretty incredible. amazing. Yeah, and I just yeah. keep thinking like he's he's trying to read this book. Yeah, <laughs> like this is uh, you know he's got all the pieces of pages laying around. And he's just like, what the yeah, hell does this book say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then the tourists come in there and start stepping on his numbered rocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember actually we were on. I think we went there last year too, and someone was leaning up against the one. I tried to tell people like, and you're in these temples, don't. Yeah. yeah, I mean, don't touch it. Like, try not. I mean, it is thousands of years old, and it's delicate, and it's color, and it's you know. Yeah. Try not to touch it. I mean, if you have to, a certain thing, fine. But you know, try not to generally touch it or lean up against it or whatever. And yeah, someone was leaning up against it. One of his research assistants came up and said, oh, "Excuse me, you're you're leaning on the you know the ancient artwork that we're trying to restore." Please don't do that. Like, yeah. 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 Exactly. I feel yeah. I feel for the guy. I mean, mm-hmm. I I also yeah. still want to go and and look at the progress but I, yeah i mean it's the i, I understand the time isn't it yeah 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 it must be brutal i mean it's got to be a, yeah i mean you can understand that i think you can understand the mentality of somebody that's that is invested their life yeah. in trying to reconstruct or find something and they're there every day and it's just these people keep coming in and you're like just this is mine go away yeah you know i understand it but yep yeah at the same time yep it's like I'm gonna jump in this box real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <It's, yep. laughs> these assholes keep coming yeah. and climbing around on your decoding process. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where yeah, is where is Stone A B two one four seven nine? God damn it! Oh, oh sorry. It's, it's, somebody kicked it over here a little bit. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that also happens, right? There's that uh, yep. triple corner That's block that we found. Mention it. Yeah, and it we have never been able to find it since. Like, gone. It's gone. Yeah. I have a couple, I have two or three different artifacts that I can point to like that over time where it's just like, we found something interesting Mm -hmm. and uh, you document it and you leave it there and then you come back a year later and you're like, it's gone. And I've tried to find that. I've actually, Mo, I've gotten Mo to chase it down with the staff there and say, hey, yeah, this block and we showed them pictures of it. Is it in the museum? Did you move it? Is it here? Is it there? And they're like, nope, no idea. And someone's carried it off. Um, Ah, Gone forever. But yeah, it was like a beautiful piece of one of these big boxes that are on Elephantine Island, and it's the 
it's the join between three of the bull noses. It's yeah. just that corner where you have this perfect these three beautiful bull noses come together on the on an outside corner and yep, somebody it's somebody's doorstop now, I guess, or it's on the antiquities uh, market somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Well, maybe they're maybe they're gonna put it in the uh in the gym. Uh, yeah, I mean, you'd think you'd know a little bit yeah. more about it if, if that was the case. You mean in the gym? No, like, yeah. I, I <laughs> in the gym. Yes, they've taken it in to the gym. gym. They're like, yeah, yeah, this is great for a lift. <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> the Grand Which Egyptian is Museum. Which also a funny story, right? The, the Grand Egyptian Museum. Mm -hmm. I've stopped promising people that we're going to go in there. Right, yeah. Still not open. And uh, interesting fun fact, they've been building that thing for 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. Yeah. And how long did they say it took to build the Great Pyramid again? Yeah. Oh, 25 20, years. I see. Yeah, years, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. This is a tiny little museum mm -hmm. compared to the Great Pyramid. But no, no, you guys can't get it done in modern times in 20 years and you expect us to believe that someone yeah. built the Great Pyramid with primitive methods in 25 years. Yep. But yeah, going back going sense. back to this this idea of of restoration. Yeah. It is conceivable that they pyramided a previous large structure in 25 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a lot more, uh, a lot more um, this, believable. Especially this, if all the uh, the surrounding structure was already in place, the tiling, yeah, the the yeah. causeway, so they could drag the, their blocks up. <clears throat> yep, right. The orientation is yeah, there. I mean, yeah. you, it, it, you're not, you know, and they built to mud brick ramps, so perfectly lined up. Blah blah blah. They did it all the way. But there definitely is like all, all these, every pyramid that you see that's in some like severe. Uh, level of destruction, even the cut into Menkara, it gets to a vertical wall. Yeah, I mean it's slightly tilted, right? But there's this, there is a superstructure inside, structure. yeah, and mm -hmm. like all those satellite pyramids that are degraded, like there's this really steep structure on the inside. Yeah, hmm. they all well, yeah, seem I mean, to have this. My doom in particular, like that's a real mystery because it looks because the casing has fallen away so completely at my doom. I mean, those blocks on the on the what is the outside of that interior structure that's, look like they were finished. Yeah, like, they look like they finished. were intended to be the outside structure originally, yeah. and then it was a true pyramid at one point, and that was all covered up, and now all that fell away. And yeah, yeah, it's a real interesting. It is. That's an interesting hypothesis. I, yeah. I mean, it makes more sense to me. Like that, that's, I, I think it's a, it certainly fits in the renovation and reuse sort of themes, which I think is something that it was heavily um, employed by the dynastic Egyptians, uh, given that I think they also, they started with a lot of stuff. And, and, you know, same, same it's just a different interpretation of the timelines. I think it, it it's the same explanation I try to give when, when people talk about, you know, Hapshepsut's obelisk at Karnak, this 450 ton, massive obelisk uh, and they say well you know the writing on it says that it was completed in you know six or seven months or whatever it was this yeah. figure of, of this date i'm like yeah that's nonsense like when you when you work backwards you understand what it takes to quarry and shift and move and stand up and transport all this stuff but i i could believe that the carving on it was completed inside of that time yeah, yeah. which might i think that's a, a valid interpretation of what those glyphs on that obelisk say it's like yeah she put a name on it and wrote all the this beautiful carving that's all up and down that obelisk yeah i think you can imagine that might have been completed in 6 or 7 months given you got to build the scaffolding and then plan it and get it done by stonemasons not like you can put 100 of them at once so you got to you know they're just going to have to do it in specific areas at a time and she she claimed that it was carved with electrum right Right, wrought with, wrought with electrum. Yeah. yeah. So if yeah. if if this idea that, um, and we saw there's a a beautiful hatchet. Um, yeah, in the it's like a knife or an axe or a hatchet. Or yeah, something an axe. The, this is in the Luxor Museum. In the yeah. Luxor Museum, and they say that it's electrum. It, that it's well, yes, that it's uh, that there is electrum parts of it. And I, you know, yeah. the the second time I went to see it, I went to look at it again, and I looked at it really closely, and I had the, the, <clears throat> the big light. Mm. And I'm trying to determine, like, <clears throat> do they think the whole thing is electrum, or is it just is it inlaid? Because there's lots of uh, scroll work on it and everything. You know, it's very decorated. Mm. Um, but it's interesting because you know this idea of like what is electrum exactly? But she did, the carving did claim that the, the obelisk was wrought with electrum. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And the, the definition of that term is like worked with, right? Worked. Yeah. Yes. So it implies that they used Electrum tools to carve it. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. That doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Right. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah. With silver, gold, and whatever. Right. Well, it, well that's, the, that's the question is what is Electrum? I mean, like I know that the, one of the, you know, one of the possibilities is that it was an alloy of silver and gold. Right. But nobody really knows. Same with orichalcum. It's not really clear. I've right. seen also that that is an alloy of gold and copper, but nobody right. actually knows what this stuff was. Right. Like Greek fire. Mm-hmm. We know about it. They talk about it, but nobody yeah. knows how to make it. Roman concrete. Greek yeah. Concrete <laughs> yeah. yeah. Electrum and orichalcum. Yeah. These are mysterious materials from the ancient times. Hmm. That is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about the, the there's ongoing reconstruction at Karnak as well and and Luxor? Uh, yeah, it's fr- I mean, I, I can't it's difficult to make my, my mind about it. I I in general I'm like probably against a lot of it. I mean, I just the way that they're rebuilding those statues yeah. is I mean, it's the same reason why I don't think that that was a good idea to suggest that they were going to rebuild Menkara's pyramid because yeah. You you know it's only going to be a facsimile of what it once was. Mm -hmm. It's not what it once was. I think you can let people use their imagination to imagine what it once was without putting an idea in their head about a a, a vastly inferior facsimile of of what it actually was. And you see that's been the result for a lot of the statue work that they're doing at Karnak and Luxor. I mean, it's... yeah. It's it's so visibly in our modern work. I mean, look, not to take anything away from the sculptors and the artisans that are actually rebuilding these statues, and they're making them from concrete, right? And then yeah. then they paint the concrete to make it look like granite. It's 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 kind of a funny modern version of what I think is the imitation that happened in you know the early periods when they would imitate these granite vases because yeah. you'd see a this perfect, amazing granite vase, hardstone vase next to a pottery vase that's painted to look like granite. And it's funny because we're doing exactly the same thing now. Yeah. Um, except they're just making these, you know, they're, they're, they're gluing together parts of the original thing with concrete and then they're painting it to look like granite and putting dots on it. And yep. it's exactly the same thing. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't, you can see it. It's, it's, it's vastly inferior to the original yeah. stonework, but at the same time, it, I guess it's restoring a bit of the grandeur to the, to the structure uh, on the negative side, again, is that they, they are taking away access to parts of those statues that you wouldn't have access to if they weren't on the ground already. Yeah. Like there's the head that's that I talk about all the time, the one that Chris Dunn analyzed that's out the front of the Luxor statue. That's now 30 feet up in the air on the top of a reconstructed concrete body. Yeah. There was one of the better head jets uh, inside the temple, this incredibly smooth, amazing head jet. In fact, I went and looked at some old Chris Dunn. I've been talking to him that – some of his older photos of that temple. I mean, all of the head jets used to be in front of the, they, they would put the pieces of the statue in front of where the statue was and whatever remnants of it was still standing. So you could go up and look at them and, and sort of play with the pieces. Now all these pieces have been kind of reassembled and they're putting them back on this statue and it's all stuck together with concrete. Um, so I don't know what you guys think about it, but but I, I, I'm generally like, eh, I kind of yeah. wish they'd leave it alone and just document it. Yeah, and let us use our imagination. Yeah, rebuild it in on a computer. That'd be great. There you go. I I yep. I agree with you. And also, the thing I worry about is that the 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 construction efforts are so shoddy in in a lot of cases that what most likely is going to happen is more destruction of the original statue because the head's going to fall again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the other thing. Yeah, you know, it's like the head was whole <laughs> when it was on the ground, and they just put it. 30 feet back up there and the next time it falls because of the crappy right. concrete work it's going to yeah, break it's stuffed and it's you know. that's right and, and you have to know look no further than around the Giza plateau where they've been doing work and building stuff for decades now and all that modern stuff is just falling apart oh, it's falling like it apart it takes yeah yeah 15 20 years and then it starts falling apart and now the, it's, it's a joke use of makes every time it's like look at this you know, look at this the, this modern work is literally in worse shape than the thousands of year, years old stuff, and it's only taken <laughs> yeah. twenty years to get there. Yeah. So the museum is a is a good alternative, you know, to to put things yep. in the museum because then they're protected from the wind and sand erosion, and yep. whatever chemical process is happening with this granite. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm <laughs> I'm now pretty 
firmly believing that it's it's something to do with some kind of chemical process that's going on with the granite sitting in the sand. Deep in the sand. Yep. Because mm-hmm. it it literally is just peeling away you so that that's going to destroy the artifacts if they're sitting in sand or if the sand's yeah. blowing up against them again. And, so, I mean, yeah, we found a section of obelisk in <clears throat> in Karnak that had big glyphs all over it and it was sitting up on this thing and you could see that the glyphs themselves had been vastly eroded into in the similar way that we've seen on these other things. But, they, but it had glyphs. The and, the yes. glyphs yeah. themselves. And the glyphs themselves are like yeah, just yeah. falling apart. Eroded. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so it was after they cut the glyphs that the, that this erosion, erosion began. Happened. So it's, yeah. it's yeah. And, and I was paying a lot more attention to that in, uh, in a lot of cases where they have excavated an artifact, the underside, mm-hmm. that would have had contact with the ground, not wind and sand erosion, but would have been buried, is the yeah. most uh, degraded. Have you, have you guys been to Memphis? I don't think you've been to Memphis. No. no we don't do that on that. We should get up there because they have that big – it's like a 150, 200-ton statue of the, 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 of the colossal Ramses. Laying, it's laying on its back. It's in that room. You might have yeah, seen we haven't seen that it. one. Oh, yeah, I've seen pictures, yeah. But, but it's the same thing. Like It's like where it was buried – it's very eroded, and then it's like there's there's like a part like it's almost like a line you can trace. Either I think that's where it was buried, or maybe that was what was exposed. I'm not really sure, but yeah, one I'm of those sure two. There's yeah. definitely a different effect, either in or out of the ground. Probably the in ground. I, I think guess. it's yeah. in. Um, I mean, I've I looked with granite in particular. Yes, yeah. That made me reevaluate yeah. the um the the, work, the granite s- at Karnak and the statue of the the the, the head uh, with the head jet on it in the Luxor Museum of. Um, What's his name? I can't remember the pharaoh's I'm name. Hotep. Yeah, right. The guy right one in the front. side. One side of it is just like massively yeah. eroded. Yeah, and the other side is beautiful and polished, right? And it's like that. It's the side that's eroded that was under in the, the ground. In the ground, yeah, yeah. which is crazy. That's weird because it's it's like the reverse in places like uh, Tiwanaku. Yeah, different material and site maybe, and probably a different acidic. Mm-hmm. Or different soil, uh, as, soil you know, composition. chemical yeah. composition, because the stuff in places like Tiwanaku, it's like the stuff that was exposed is tremendously eroded. But it's yeah. whatever was in the ground, they stood it up like that's been preserved. But right. again, they're you know, it's an interesting point. Rainfall, yeah. all this stuff that they might be getting, like uh, yeah, different but this is the, a different story. This in is Egypt. the argument yeah. they're making with the Sphinx as well: is that under the sand, it was getting heavily degraded by water getting into the sand with the stuff or whatever. That's what they're saying. But I've seen this effect on granite. I haven't seen it so much on limestone. Limestone, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. That's weird because it is you, a li- you would it is think a you would think that it was the it was the chemical composition of the limestone uh being dissolved and flowing with the water that's affecting the granite. Yeah. So like if you have a piece of limestone there, most likely it would just concrete onto the limestone. Right. Like it, it would you, stick you would to imagine, it. You imagine it would it would build up on the limestone yeah. as opposed to, to where yeah, it right. should it should accrete exactly. accrete yeah accrete yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I mean when Chuck talked about it like he said it's not acidic it's whatever the soil is it can't really be acidic because all the limestone would be yeah. gone so mm-hmm. it's something else that's yeah. happening maybe it's just moisture in the granite and it's just, you know this point gives me some fears for things like the labyrinth which are you know in the I ground know, that's, yeah. in the ground yeah yeah. yeah. Like That's it's gonna all look like this super eroded crap stuff, and you won't be able to tell what it was. Or well, this is another thing. Written on it. The, the you know the Valley Temple and the Osirian, the upper parts of those pillars are in better condition than the lower. Like yeah. the down yeah, down were, at the lowest yeah. levels, they're they're flaking away, and right. You know, you look at the Valley Temple uh, columns. I mean, they're they're yeah. beautiful up top, and then as they get lower, where they were buried in sand, it's like they just yeah, yeah there's it's all crappy. There's like big sections of the some of those pillars in the Osirian that are just like they've se- the the exterior part is separated. Yeah, we saw it also on the like a quarter inch thick yeah. slab of just peeling off of it. Somehow. The the right. statue yeah. at the Ramesseum also has you can see big uh, like a like a like I don't know like a skin. Mm-hmm. You know the part that's polished has been like almost separated from it's the, it's spawned spawned yeah off, yeah the big chunks of it yeah yeah I right. broke one off of the, one of the Assyrian pillars of scared yeah, I was like ah you destroyed the Assyrian yeah I just <laughs> broke this ancient monument <laughs> shit <laughs> a little chunk comes off oh no oh no yeah mm-hmm. shit. Yep. Yep. there's work going on at the Assyrian too I mean shit we're we're out of time here but there, there's so much more yeah. to talk about yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Assyrian was cool. We did. I got. We got to some interesting spots on the Assyrian. We I did. did a little video about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did. 
Yeah, you can go go to Ben's channel and check out his uh, his explorations in the Osirian. He did on site. Yeah. Well, you guys you guys did a, an epic number. Of, you did a bunch of live streams there. We did we did one together. We did a chat together. But yeah, you guys did a whole bunch of live streams. Yeah, at, we um, yes. So, so for those of you listening, and I know I've got some emails from some people asking like, "Where's the podcast? What happened? I know you went to Egypt, but what happened?" So. We told you. Yeah. <laughs> we would vanish to pyramids. Right. But we also, we published quite a bit of stuff. There's lots of live stream material on the YouTube channel. It didn't get into the podcast feed. So if you were missing stuff, you've got, you've got hours and hours and hours of Egypt content of us live streaming from there. So, yeah. Yeah, we did, we did mu multiple museum streams. Uh, we did on-site streams at Karnak and Giza. Luxor and Giza and do, yeah. Do, do, mm -hmm. do, do, do. <laughs> soul soul's like yeah. follow me soul around. following us around in the museum <laughs> just singing sing mario the entire time oh mario really theme, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like bro <laughs> please stop <laughs> we look at him he's like sorry that uh, was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Trip of a lifetime. He doesn't yeah. know it yet, but that's quite yeah. an adventure for him. It was great. Yeah. Well, fellas, shall we wrap it up? Yeah. I think yeah. 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 Well, thanks for coming on, Ben. And, you know, the trips with Thank you are always awesome. Yeah. And we are already planning yeah. the next one, folks. So yep. we're stay definitely tuned. going again. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay I think tuned. Yeah, I'll, February, I'll up. February is the time. Yeah, I think right? that is the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, I mean, the, the weather was fantastic for the most part. Nice and yep. cool. So mm -hmm. didn't do too much sweating. Uh, all the Quite Egyptians cool think it's night. like ice cold. They're all wearing three jackets. Puffy jackets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scarves and clothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's freezing. Yeah. It yep. was good though. Yeah, it was yeah, great. Yeah, the weather was perfect. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll put a I'll put a page up on my website about it. I'm going to do future tours. I'm getting tons of emails about people and and people reaching out trying to get uh, figure out when the next one is. I'm going to put at least a at least a uh, a future intentions and and ideas sort of thing. It's not you know committed or whatever, but at least yeah. the plans and what what we're working on is going to go up there. But as I I've told several people, if you really want to get on the tours, the best way you can join my Patreon or join the Snakes Patreon because Absolutely. we always give Patreon members and supporters uh, or you know YouTube channel members etc. Subscribe stuff for me and locals and stuff. All of those anyone who's supporting the channel, we we, we give them early access to register for these tours. Yeah, uh, they get to hear about it first. So. Um, that's really which the is best good way because they it. they fill up fast like this this one yeah, dude yeah it was crazy yeah yeah once it went out to the public I mean this first trip was like four or five days yep. gone yeah and then yeah it was nice we got to put on the second tour because that second tour was made up almost exclusively of people that were like God damn it I missed the <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> yeah I missed the timing to get on the first or so they were happy we threw a second one on yeah which we only did because we had to cancel the trip to Lebanon obvious, yeah for yeah. obvious reasons yep. And then, uh, yeah, well, we really got to get out, out there the eventually. Yeah, we will. Yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah, we will. But there are other places to go as well. Yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, we're working on that too. So. We are. We have we have many yep. plans, people. So stay tuned. Yep. Keep watching the Uncharted X channel and Brothers of the Serpent because we are going to yep. be traveling the world and we want to take you guys with us because it's so awesome. It is. Yeah. All right. And it's a good time. We'll yeah. Do some jamming. Yes. 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 And we'll always jam. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ben, thanks so much. You can, you know, everybody knows where you are, unchartedx.com and yep. uh, on YouTube. Anything else? Thank you, guys. Definitely support nope, the thank show. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Great catching up. Looking forward to the Eclipse event coming up here yeah. shortly. Yeah, that's right. And the then, Eclipse. of course, we'll, uh, we're also all going to be together at the uh, Cosmic, Cosmic Summit. Cosmic Summit. In yes. June. Cosmic Summit. Yeah. Yep. Coming up in June, cosmicsummit.com yep. for tickets and information. Going to be a fun uh Conference, a lot of really cool people coming. Robert Shock's coming. Yep. Um, who is uh, from uh, India? God, Praveen Mohan. Yeah, Praveen. Coming. Yeah, Praveen's going to be there. Meeting him, Randall, of course. You guys. Mm -hmm. We Lots still haven't. We still haven't put our presentation together, but it's going to be great. <laughs> Whatever it's, it's going to be about, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. It's it's me, unfinished me at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The presentation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'll put the I'll put the links to the Cosmic Summit and everything in the uh, in the show notes for anybody who's interested. You guys should definitely go to that. Um, it's always a good time, and there's going to be a lot of streaming. Yeah, 
Yep. 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 You could you could do the live stream as well. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. We love you. Always have. Always will. Good night, Adamu. Get back to work. Get back to work. <laughs> there it is. <laughs>